So, uh, anyways. The, um, first of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I've been a lawyer. Well, no, actually, I've been a liar. Uh, I, you should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I've provided references to aid, and I don't know everything, and I'm open to ideas. Uh, there's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. That's all taken from that movie, The Matrix. And it's more true than you know. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. And, and that's, that's literally what's going on. Carrie can see through the illusion. And, and, and he helps people all the time that are having trouble seeing through the illusion. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, then how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? And that's so true. Many people, and that's, Carrie helps them. They, they get abused by the system. I get approached by people all the time, and Carrie does too, I'm sure, um, uh, that are being abused. And um, mm -hmm. never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, tax evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the cops. And that's, that's literally who, who the founders were. George Washington was a hemp farmer. President of the International Hemp Growers Association. Oh, is that right? I he didn't was. know that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think he, he used it to grow uh, for a uh, rope, right? Well, the rope industry know. was... Uh, actually, huge. hemp was used for clothes and all sorts of things. Everything back then. It was, uh, it was it's actually, they used a lot of it instead of cotton. Uh, Nowadays, they use cotton. Well, my brother was in the Paper. military, and he said they had a hemp rope, right. that big yeah. round rope, a hemp rope, they took two of them and dropped them out of the one of those helicopters that looks like a banana, dropped it down and picked up an 80-ton uh, tank with two ropes that big around to do the same thing. They needed eight that big, so but the government said you can't use it because they made it to show them how much more strength it was. Right. You can't use it because it's hemp. Yeah, isn't that interesting? All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people with good conscience to remain silent. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex. I don't trust the military industrial complex. I don't trust the mainstream media. I don't trust the Baxter criminal cabal that owns the government, owns the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex, owns the military industrial complex, and owns the mainstream media. If you call me a conspiracy theorist, then I don't trust you. Government is not reason, it's not eloquence, it is force. Like a fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. An informed citizenry is at the heart of, every, of a dy dynamic democracy. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. So this is actually a Supreme Court case, Downs versus Bidwell, 1901. Um, this is um, part of what that case said. It actually, there was, there was, it was a very, um, in my opinion, a landmark case. It came out in 1901. Uh, it was argued in, uh, I think I'm going to go through that. Anyways, it says here, eliminating then from the opinions of this court all expressions unnecessary to the disposition of the particular case, and gleaning therefrom the exact point desired in each of the following propositions may be considered as established. Number one, that the District of Columbia and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution, giving jurisdiction in cases arising between citizens of different states. That territories are not states within the meaning of this statute, permitting writs of error from this court in cases where the validity of a state statute is drawn into question. So, um, after, after this case, they used to have writs of error. You could petition the Supreme Court for a writ of error. After this case, they started going to certiaries. Okay, and now, 
if you go to the Supreme Court, I've been to the Supreme Court five times, and if you go to the Supreme Court with a writ of error, they'll send it back to you and tell you have to do a petition for a writ of certiorari. And um, anyways, um, number just, three. Just one second. I wrote a, I have a judge that I'm trying to sue. So I went to the judicial, what do you call it? The judicial conduct for judges and state department. commission. That's a state, state judge. judge. Yes, I did. Okay. And I got a letter yesterday from him, and it says even if the attorney or the judge is wrong, they have the latitude to make attitude to make it right, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah, and, and that's why I never talk about their what they do. I go after their oath of office. And so I, I, I go after them for perjury of oath, for uh, uh, felonies, all sorts of stuff. Anyways, number three, <coughs> that the District of Columbia and the territories are states, as that word is used in treaties with foreign powers, with respect to the ownership, disposition, and inheritance of property. And so this, this case was actually argued in January of 1901, and it, it, the, the, the ruling came out in May. And there's a DC code that came out in March of 1901, and I think that the DC code, they went and they got a heads up from the Supreme Court, the Department of Justice, and so they prepared the DC code because the DC code, see, if you understand this, this inheritance of property, that's talking about the Sestigate Trust, okay, and and which is what they're doing nowadays. It's all over the place, okay. That Roman called the Sestigate Trust, and we're going to go into that a little bit more. That the territories are not within the clause of the Constitution providing for the creation of a Supreme Court and such inferior courts as Congress may see fit to establish. And that's another thing that you see. Um, the Supreme Court, there is a Supreme Court of the District of Columbia. Uh, John Roberts is, as Chief Judge of the Supreme Court, and all the judges, they can be the Supreme Court of the District of Columbia or the Supreme Court of the United States. And, and, and you don't know which one they are. But what happens is the arguments that are being presented determines which hat they wear. And you don't see them operating as Supreme Court of uh, the United States anymore. Like, for example, recently when they turned away these cases over the election, you know, um, they were operating as the Supreme Court of the District of Columbia. Okay, because the uh, elections are all D.C. elections. When you understand the law and how it all works, you know, there's very little that happens, and that's why, that's why, if you know that, that I've written a book about Trump, and uh, uh, the, about the deep state, and who they are, and where they came from, and all that stuff, and um, it's my opinion that the reason that, that they caught Trump in an executive order back in uh, 2018 about foreign interference in our elections, and they caught these Dominion voting machines transmitting data overseas through an Italian satellite that was leased to the Vatican. And and so uh, that's foreign interference in our elections. And that's why they seized, because District of Columbia is actually owned by the Vatican, or was until then. I think they seized it back. That's why the National Guard troops were there. Uh, anyways, we'll keep going. We're going to go into that here. Um, that Constitution has been once formally uh, extended by Congress to territories, neither Congress nor the territorial legislature can enact laws inconsistent therewith. And so, uh, but there's actually in Texas, for example, there's, if you read, if you look at uh, Title IV of the United States Code, that defines how the legislature's set up, how the Senate is going to work, how it's all done in the state. And, and it's actually territorial, okay? The state of Texas is a territory. And you can be in the territory or you can be in the de jure state. You can be in one or the other. You don't have to be in both. And once you understand what's going on and how it's happening, um, you can, you can uh, separate yourself. That's about all you can do, though, is just refuse to participate. Um, anyways, so um, as a summary, Articles 1 and 4, paragraphs 1 and 4, right? Paragraphs 1 and 4 here. No Article 3 courts in the District of Columbia in the territories, and, and none of these judges. Matter of fact, there are no um, de jure courts. There's no Article 3 courts. The only court that 
Congress that the, that the Constitution set up is the Supreme Court. And then it said that Congress can set up such inferior courts as they decide. Well, um, the, um, the thing about the, the uh, uh, Congress is that in, uh, uh, under the Articles of Confederation, it says in Article 1, it says the style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. We'll go through that. And then what happened is in 1861, the Southern states walked out of Congress and they ceased to have a quorum and they couldn't conduct business. And Lincoln ordered them back under executive authority and they've been operating under executive authority ever since. And now all those people were dead. They cannot convene a lawful de jure Congress even if they wanted to. And so uh, that's what Trump is dealing with, okay? And in 1871, they set up a corporation called United States of America. If you look on your Federal Reserve note, you'll see, look at it. It's got the United States of America, like in the Articles of Confederation. On land title documents, it also says, on the original land patents, it says the United States of America. But if you look on, a, on, on your um, US passport, or on Air Force One, or on other things, or on this, I got a silver eagle right here. It says United States of America. That's the unconstitutional corporation. And so, anyways, so. Oh, whoops. No petitions for a writ of error from the territories of the District of Columbia. If you're in a territory, then, um, then, then, yeah. And and Texas is a territory. Okay, um, it, you can be in the de jure state here, or but most people here have no idea and they're in a territory. Now, just real quick, just think about this a minute. If you were to make them define that, see, in other words, um, what, what United States am I in? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> see, no, uh, well, you know, we're here today in court. I understand. Is this a United States court or the United States court? See, everything that, that I do is, is not, I'm not, not, I'm not running from what he's saying. I piggyback on what he says. What he says is true. The only difference is I see things bizarre. I'm dyslexic. So the question is, the District of Columbia and the territories, huh? Is that what we're talking about? Then shut up, make them, what do you mean? I don't know what I mean. I'm too stupid to know. See? And then when they ask you a question, well, unless I know, I can't answer the question. And so what happens is when I go to court, they just want me out of there because they won't allow See, they won't allow that out. And I didn't mean to interfere with that. So he's right. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Okay? And once you understand some of this stuff, there's a lot of ways. The way that I like the best right now, and it's actually a way that he suggested, is bar grievances. Okay? And the reason bar grievances are so powerful is because anytime you have an issue with any government, there's a lawyer behind it. Okay, yes. and all these lawyers have an oath of office to support and defend the, the federal constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, and 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 they're scared to death of the bar. And you file a bar grievance, and that gets their attention. I'm telling you. <laughs> Anyways, so um, so uh, number three, the District of Columbia and the territories are states with in treaties with four powers. That's the reason in the United States Code. If you look like in Title VI, which is, I think, immigration or something like that, or Title VIII, it'll define the United States as, um, it'll say, um, the territories and the states, it'll say, and then it'll list all the territories, but it's calling them states. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it'll say, uh, the, diff the, the jurisdiction includes uh, the states, and, uh, and, and then it'll say Guam, America, Small, Puerto Rico, well, those are all states under under this Downs versus Bidwell case. You see what I'm saying? And so you think, most people would think, that that it's talking about Texas, and it's not. Okay, they got no authority in Texas. Okay, the Immigration Service or the uh, Customs Service, they got no authority in Texas. And, um, and so um, once you point that out to them, things will change. But, but so um, um, you got to understand how it all works, though. Okay, and uh, so then Congress has to formally extend the Constitution to the territories. Now, and, and I think, like Arizona, 
was was a territory up until 1912, I think, when Arizona became a state. I think it's still a territory. I don't think Congress really extended the uh, um, the Constitution to the state of Arizona. I think it's really a territory, <clears throat> just because of you know the way everything is there. I've spent a lot of time in Arizona. Uh, I love the people in Arizona. Uh, Arizona and Texas are my two favorite places, quite frankly. But um, but I think that it's um, I think it's really a territory. Anyways, um, so this is uh, one of the statements that were that were interesting. We're also of the opinion that the power to acquire territory by treaty implies not only the power to govern such territory, but to prescribe upon what terms the United States will receive its inhabitants and what their status <coughs> will be in what Chief Justice Marshall termed the American Empire. And so you, you don't think America, there's an American Empire? There definitely is an American Empire. Okay? And right now, you're seeing it fall apart a lot like the Roman Empire fell apart. Very similar. You'll see it happening. It started at the fringes and it starts going into the to the to the center. <clears throat> this is also some more stuff here. Um, this was actually over a customs tax. And and I think that this tells us why the IRS is located in Puerto Rico. Because the IRS doesn't have jurisdiction to tax anybody in Puerto Rico. I don't know if you know that. The state legislature can tax them, but the federal government cannot tax people in Puerto Rico. And this is <coughs> this is where it goes to it. The states could only delegate to Congress such powers as they themselves possessed, as they had no power to acquire new territory, they had none to delegate in that connection. The logical inference from this is that if Congress had power to acquire new territory, which is conceded, that power was not hampered by the constitutional provisions. We are therefore of the opinion that the island of Puerto Rico is a territory pertinent, to, pertinent and belonging to the United States, but not a part of the United States within the revenue clauses of the Constitution. So the IRS is located in Puerto Rico, but they don't tax anybody in Puerto Rico, which is kind of interesting. They hire a lot of people in Puerto Rico. I don't know if you know that or not. But um, anyways, again, see, if you understand, like he says, um, if you understand, in the, you're in a dark room, but if you know where you're at in the room, you can walk over to the couch and sit down, or you can walk over to this chair and sit down. So you have to know the room you're in, what the layout is, and where the chairs are, and that's what, that's basically. So when you say that it, they're located in uh, Puerto Rico, what do you mean they're headquartered? Right, okay. right. Yeah, there's there's offices all over. Right. But their headquarters are in Puerto Rico. And always, I like in Texas. It's kind of funny, but because I I've, I've actually seen people get something from Austin from the IRS because usually you'll get something from the IRS from another state. They gotta put you in interstate commerce. Uh, but Texas is a little bit different, and I think that under the Texas Constitution, the reason is, is under the Texas Constitution, each county is sovereign, just like under the federal Constitution, each state is sovereign. Under the Texas Constitution, each county is sovereign, and, and with certain powers delegated to the state government. You see what I'm saying? And that's why the IRS it can be uh, put into international, um, I'm guessing, uh, you know, that's that's my observation. I, I really don't have anything uh, to support it other than the way it works with the federal government. But so, Downs versus Bidwell was argued on January 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th of 1901, and it was decided on the 27th of May. And this code of law for the District of Columbia was passed by Congress on March 3rd of 1901, which is about halfway through. And I think that what happened was that they, um, Congress got wind, or not Congress, the Department of Justice, and so they went and passed the Code of Law for the District of Columbia um, before it was actually came out. Um, anyway, so some of the uh, stuff in the DC Code is, uh, that's where they start talking about the Sestake Trust that's where they presume you're dead, and that's where a Supreme Court of the District of Columbia was created. They have commissioners, uh, proctors, which are prosecutors, bailiffs, marshals, are all paid royalties, okay, and that's all in the D.C. Code. Now, um, I believe that the D.C. Code became United States Code, okay? Um, 
matter of fact, I'm positive. But again, how do you prove that? Um, I haven't found anything. They just started calling it United States Code because technically, United States is 10 miles over there between Virginia and Maryland. Okay? And so, anyways, um, this is DC Code um, 31 Stat 1231. Talks about executors, administrators, collectors, administration. Um, this is uh, prosecutor's fees. They call them proctors, but that's a prosecutor. And this is uh, on a trial. So this is just their fees, 31 Stat 1363. On a trial before a jury in a civil or criminal cost before right, referees, or on a file hearing in equity or admiralty, a docket fee of $20, so that the prosecutor gets the docket fee. And that in cases of admiralty maritime jurisdiction where the libel and recovers less than $50, the docket fee of his proctor shall be only $10. In cases at law where the judgment is rendered without a jury, 10 bucks. These were all fees, and this is 1901. Okay, 1901, back when a dollar, you got to figure that, I mean, the price of silver is rigged, okay? So you really don't know what this Silver Eagle here is worth right now. They're, <coughs> they, they, they rig it to its worth, it's like $27, $28 right now. Um, and so you got to figure at least that, if he's getting paid $10, then you got to figure, you know, 300 bucks in today's money is at least, and I think it's more, more way more. But, um, but so, um, in cases at law when the cause is discontinued, $5. Uh, for sire fascia and other proceedings on recognizance, $5. For each disposition taken, admitted in evidence in a cause, $2.50. For services rendered in a case, removed from the Supreme Court of the District by an appeal to the Court of Appeals, 5 bucks. They're getting paid for everything. Okay, they're nickel and dime of everything. These these prosecutors, the the local prosecutor near city court, he's getting it, and and so is like downtown. Uh, all of these prosecutors, you, you, this is big money in these courts. Um, for examination by the district attorney before a judge or commissioner of persons charged with a crime, five dollars. Uh, for each day, the district attorney's attendance in court, five bucks. Just for showing up in court, he gets paid five bucks, which is. 150 bucks today, uh, which is uh, probably uh, a lot more than that, quite frankly, because the price of silver is rigged. Um, when an indictment for a crime is tried before a jury and a conviction is had, so they get paid for a conviction. So they're, they're, they're motivated to get that conviction. In addition to the fees you're in provided, a counsel fee in a proportion to the importance of the case. Okay, so if it's a really important case, they get more money. <laughs> Not exceeding 30 bucks. So 30 of these, so that's 30 times 30 is 900 bucks. They shall be paid to the district attorney 2% on all monies collected and realized in a suit or proceeding under the revenue law conducted by him. So, so any case where, like Carrie was dealing with, that prosecutor was getting a royalty, okay? If there was a fine, the people that were put in jail, that, that prosecutor is getting a commission on all of that stuff. Yeah, in fact, they don't get, where they make their money is, it's not to find you guilty or not guilty, it's if you do jail time. The more jail time you get, the more money they make. Right. So that's their incentive. Right. So, so this is through the corporation, is that correct? Well, it is, it is, but everything's the corporation now. See what I'm saying? The de jure government, what happened is in 1861, the southern states walked out of Congress, right? And Congress ceased to have a quorum, and so it's all a corporation. Everything's a corporation. The only, there's, there's a case here in Texas, and I've got a copy of it, back in 1996, where our one Supreme Court of the Republic of Texas put WFAA TV on trial and fined them. And they didn't even show up. And I don't know how much they fined them, millions of dollars. And the case that I have, is where they brought it into the 65th district court to get the de facto courts to uh, vacate the decision of the R1 Supreme Court, okay, of the Republic of Texas. And um, the judge refused to do it. He says, I can't, that's res judicata. 
And so that WFAA TV had to go bankrupt. I don't know if you know that or not, but yes, back in the 90s, WFAA TV went bankrupt. And, um, and so a common law court is very powerful. Um, I, you know, we have trouble getting people to participate in it, participate in our grand juries, <coughs> but it's very powerful. You have no idea the power if it's done properly. And, and, and they have no authority. They don't have a shred of authority. The, the, these de facto courts, okay? And, and so our common law court, we just make our decision and they got nothing to say. They don't, matter of fact, the first thing they'll say is we don't recognize your decision. Okay, well, that's, that's not surprising, but that's okay. Because what you do is you, our common law court can now bring it into their court as a foreign judgment. And they have to recognize a foreign judgment once we bring it in. And we bring it into their court as a foreign judgment. And, and then we can go ahead and, and get a remedy that way. See what I'm saying? And, and this WFAA TV, I don't know if they actually, what they when the, when the WFAA TV filed bankruptcy, they should have filed a claim in the bankruptcy. And, and they would have got something out of that. Another thing you can do is there's a Title 15 involuntary bankruptcy you can bring, okay? And so you can bring an involuntary bankruptcy against these, you know, these criminal corporations is what they are. But so, um, there's ways of dealing with it. It seems pretty overwhelming. <laughs> well, okay. well, how do you eat an elephant? One piece of time. See, and, and you're right. It is overwhelming. Yeah. You know, but but what you do is, well, I mean, okay. So, so do you try to just get out of the system? Like, like, don't take Social Security. No. I'm out of the system. I take Social Security. In fact, they even gave me two fourteen hundred dollar um, um, what you call it stimulus checks. Okay, so so you don't pay income tax, but you get benefits from the. Okay, so you're looking at it wrong. Okay. okay. None of the taxes go to anything the government does. See. So no, I'm not taking advantage of it. See, you're taking advantage of cheap gas. You're taking advantage of good food. You're taking advantage of air conditioning. I can, no, I'm not. I'm paying for it. That's right. I'm paying for it. it. Again, it comes down to, I don't know if you saw the movie The Matrix? I did. It's, everything's an illusion. And you can, you can decide not to participate. Well, there's all kinds of different levels of illusion. There <laughs> is. There is. I mean, you can say of the government, but then you can say we're illusions too. Okay. Well, you this know, is a there's 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 this all is an energy things. field if you understand. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, physics. yeah, yeah. Or you or, or whatever. Right. One of the questions that I ask is, if you don't mind answering, what color is Mickey Mouse on a DPI digital color TV? What color is Mickey Mouse? All right, let me make it easier for you. What color is Mickey Mouse on a black and white TV? <laughs> well, I think it's both black and white. No, sir. Mickey, black Mouse, black. Mickey Mouse doesn't exist. So you believe in you believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy? I believe. <laughs> oh, but wait, you said no, that. No, I believe in the Mickey Mouse concept. <laughs> well, oh, well, I didn't ask not you. That That's not what I asked you. What color is Mickey Mouse? Black and white. Well, then you believe in the Easter Bunny because he's the same. See, what I'm trying I to do. I do believe in the Easter Bunny. Okay. I, I, I believe it as See, a concept. It's, it's a, it's a, it, I understand, okay. It's an illusion. It Mickey is. Mouse doesn't exist. Well, it conceptually it does. Okay, then, then you know what? You probably won't get it. You probably won't get it because 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 you're paying for something and by, believe me, you, you keep paying your, your fair share because that's the American way. If you well, got to understand that Really, the way the Constitution was set up is that was supposed to be one of the limitations on the government is you limit their ability to get money through taxation. Yeah, but they, and already, then the they, government, asked, they huh? already passed an amendment for that. Well, but that's, if you understand the law, there, there's no 16th Amendment. That, that, there's courts have even ruled that the 16th Amendment doesn't give the government any new taxing powers. And, and so, so. I don't know. This is, yeah. It's every <laughs> amendment, there's, there's even. Every amendment after, again, you think of it this way, Southern states walked out of Congress in 1861, they ceased to have a quorum, 
they, Lincoln ordered them back under executive authority, and, and they've been operating <coughs> under executive authority again, so that's the unconstitutional corporation passed that 16th Amendment. Would you, would you the agree? current 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, 15th Amendment, every amendment after is okay. all for that unconstitutional corporation. I, I mean, some of these amendments are good amendments. Okay. Like oh, I, think, I think that... Um, Hold on. What does that say at the top of that? Tell me what that is. That's a, that's a, that's a letter from Congress. What does it say? Read it. Oh, it's the Grace Commission. Okay. Now, read the yellow part. No, we're turning over and read the yellow part. Read it out loud for us. With two-thirds of everyone's personal income taxes wasted or not collected, 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by the interest on the federal debt, federal debt and by federal government contributions and transfer payments. In other words, all individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the services which taxpayers expect from their government. So tell me what that just said. It, it just means that a lot of our money. No, sir. All of it. Not one nickel. So, you know what you need to do? So, you, need, you need to ramp up and pay more. <laughs> Not one dime of what you pay goes to the government. It go it goes to the what he just said, Lincoln. Well, and 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 you think I mean, now, how many years after the, the Grace Commission was during the Reagan administration? Right. But now, let me ask you a question. Why did they call... Well, well, could the Grace Commission no. be incorrect? No. Why not? Because they... Okay, let me ask you a question. Could that not be the sun? Could there be no clouds? See, you, you, you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, I'm an idiot, and I've got to make that work. I've got to make what I believe. Now, let me ask you a question. Why is it called the 1040? Why is the tax return not called a 1039, a 2061? Why is it called a 1040? I don't know. Because in, when Lincoln borrowed the money from England to fight the Civil War, he got 10-year bonds and 40-year bonds. 1040. Why is it, why are our taxes due on April 15th? Why isn't it May 2nd, February 9th? Today, with the technology that we have, you can put it in and hit a button on January the 1st and print it out right there. Why is it April 15th? It's to honor Lincoln. He was assassinated on the 14th and died on the 15th. That's his honor for putting the Bank of England above everything. Yeah, but they but they delayed that. Some, some. It's not always on the 15th. Though. Only because this of the COVID is always due on the April the 15th. Always. Has been for for years, but there are circumstances that comes up that the people need more time. That's true. You can also put in for an extension. They'll give it to you. So, so, but it's always due on April 15th, and the reason for it is, is to honor Lincoln. Okay, so, um, Sorry, anyways, this is, uh, we're going to go through a bunch of these fees. I think I'm going to skip through this stuff because uh, the idea being is that these Marshall's fees, there's Marshall's fees, this is all found in the DC code. There's like uh, three of these slides with all these marshals' fees that they get. Commissioner's fees. Now you got to understand that these judges, there's no judges, but there is commissioners. Okay, and all these judges, they call themselves a judge, but they're actually commissioners. And so these are the fees that they get for for doing all this stuff. And I'm going to go into more of this stuff here. So they, they get, these judges get fees too, all of these cases. That, um, for hearing and deciding on criminal charges, uh, all sorts of stuff. They get fees for all sorts of things. For issuing warrants, this is where, uh, this is again taken from the DC code, um, 31 stat 1189. In interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. So they only really have authority over corporations. That's the reason they created the CESTK Trust. That's the reason when they assault you, when you get anything from a court, the name is spelt in all block capital letters. It's not to a man, it's to a CESTK Trust. And they're, gonna, they're playing these little games under the Uniform Commercial Code to get you to be the surety for their fictitious entity. This is actually chapter 56 of 31 Stat 1432. It says the legal estate to be the CESTK use. And, and so, and that goes back, and this is where they presume you're dead. Okay? You're presumed to be dead. So it's again, it ties into the CESTK trust. And 
And um, this is at uh, 31 Stat 1911. The Supreme Court of the District of Columbia in general terms shall make rules regulating the practice pleading before justice of the peace and in relation to appeals for their judgments not inconsistent with law. See, they're making all these, all these rules are coming from the Supreme Court. So, so are, are all these rules or laws uh, still effective? Well, this is 1901. There may have been changes since then, but, but the, it's all in place. If, if there's any changes, the fees have been changed. In other words, instead of getting $2.50, maybe it's, you know, 50, bucks or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so, so these, these are still active, but there are parts that have been uh, reformed? Or? The DC code has not been repealed. It's now called the United States Code. Okay, so, so, so do they? So if you take something to court and you reference the DC code, code what would they do? It's not called. Well, the they DC never. Code. It's called the United States Code now. I, I so, I, so so DC code doesn't exist today. Well, it does. If you go, actually, uh, I, I used to search for it online, but now I'm starting to see it online even, where where there's a. Uh, uh, District of Columbia Council and and there's commissioners and so some of that stuff it didn't used to show up when I searched for it online and I think it's because I've been stirring up a ruckus over it uh, but anyways um, so the um, so this talks about the Supreme Court this is a US Supreme Court case or District of Columbia, it's a District of Columbia court case because it's involving the people of Puerto Rico. Balzac versus people of Puerto Rico. United States District Court is not a true United States court established under U.S. <coughs> Constitution Article 3 to administer the judicial power of the United States, but was created in virtue of the sovereign congressional faculty granted under Article 4, Section 3 of making all legal rules and regulations respecting the territory belong to the United States. And so all of these, even these U.S. courts down here, these federal courts are all territorial. Right. Uh, for an example, um, I went to court and, and they, they used some rule. And I said, I don't agree with the rule. The judge says there are 953 rules. So in the federal district court, there's 953 rules. But yet the law, there's the, the Supreme Law of the land, there's only 10 amendments. So those 10 amendments, they're trying to get around them by writing rules. So there's 953 federal rules. Rules are, are, are regulations. As a matter of fact, they use them synonymously. And regulations are color of law. They're not law, they're color of law. Okay. And, and well, look, it define color of law. I'm not, I, I'm color of law is that. something that looks like law, acts like law, but isn't. Right. But it isn't. That's right. Okay. So it's a contract if you okay. agree to it. Okay. If, if you happen to be, be, it really only applies to government employees. All regulations apply to government employees, and that's it. If and it has wings and flies, what is it? <laughs> I'm asking you. You look at me like, like, no, I'm asking you. If it has wings and flies, what is it? It could be a many things. See? Airplane, a bird. Could be a bird? Okay, then what kind of bird? Well, it could be, that's right. It could be an airplane. That's right. It could be an ultralight. That's right. See, that's what they're doing to us. We're, what they're doing is they've gotten us away from the core. No, we're no longer tethered to the Constitution. We're out here swinging around like this, trying, that's to, right. trying to get. That's we're right. trying to get. What, well, I don't understand. And, I don't understand. And so, the founding so, fathers. So a lot of our laws are not. That's right. Like, it's not under the founding the, fathers. were it's, absolutely. It's not a detail of the Constitution. No, they're, they're, it's, the it's, founding fathers were brilliant. They knew the threats because <coughs> they put in there Article <coughs> Six, Section Two, says that the, this Constitution shall be the supreme law of the land, and it doesn't matter what any state constitution or statute says. And so it's it's. But so this is the current Thirteenth Amendment. It says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude is sexist punishment for a crime whereof the party shall be duly convicted. So. So, so they hold a show trial in the kangaroo court and they sell you into slavery. And, and he, the prisoner, has as a consequence of his crime not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights, except those which the law and its humanity abort him. He is, for the time being, a slave of the state. And so they, they, they hold these show trials in these kangaroo courts and they turn you into a slave. And, and, and that's all satanic, okay? This is Deuteronomy 24 and 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren or the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him or selleth him, 
then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. This, these people should be put to death. That's what needs to happen. And they have to impose martial law, which is what's happening. They've imposed martial law because martial law supersedes and replaces common law. That's found in the causes and necessities for taking up arms in 1775. A penitentiary. A penitentiary has meant a penitent and ordained of repentances. A place for penitence. Okay? That's what a penitentiary is. It's all tied to the Roman cult. The a penance <coughs> is a punishment imposed for a crime by ecclesiastical laws. All of these laws are ecclesiastical laws. It's an acknowledgement of the offense. Penance may be changed into a sum of money to be applied by for pious uses called commuting. <laughs> Trump commuted Roger Stone's conviction. Well, that's what happened. Is he paid off the Roman cult? That's exactly what happened. And that's taken from this Jacob A. New Law Dictionary, 1750 edition. But they're citing Book 3 and Book 4, the Institutes and the Laws of England, which is Coke in the 1500s. This is nothing new. Under the international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by non de guerre because the alien enemy cannot maintain an action during the war in his own name. That's why they spell the name in all block capital letters. That's a non de guerre. That's the Sestake Trust. Okay, one, one more thing. Have you ever been to a cemetery? Look at all the gravestones. They're all written the same way, all caps. Mm -hmm. that, in other words, in other they're, words, they got you dead because you have no a dead person. That's the Sestake Trust. That's right. So, so why is it all capped? Why can't you have the? Because you're that's dead. Roman law. You're dead. It's Roman law. The the uh, there's a, I've got a set of books at home entitled Roman Law in America, and it goes through mortgages, all sorts of stuff that you see going on. It's all okay. Roman law. It's all Roman law. And we're going to go into it here, but Roman law, civil law, as in the rules of civil procedure, Roman law, civil law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases and talking about municipal law. And there's a maxim of Roman law that says, let he who is willing to be deceived be deceived. That's why that judge will sit up there and he'll lie to you. He'll do all sorts of stuff because he's... He's bought and paid for it. He's a Satanist. It's all satanic. Okay, now, do you know what the word mortgage, the definition of mortgage is? Okay, mort is mortician. Right. Death. Mort. Gage is burden. Pledge. So mort a mortgage is <coughs> a death. Death pledge. Burden. Death pledge. That's pleasure. the definition of it. That's right. That's how we got our name mor uh, That's mortician. Right. That's right. A mixed war is, uh, is one which is made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. Pecuniary. Pecuniary, such as arise either from withholding ecclesiastical dues or the doing or neglecting some act relating to the church, whereby some damage accrues to the plaintiff. You know why people were leaving Europe in droves in the 16s and 1700s? It's because of this crap that was going on over there. And now it's here. Yep, and now it's here. Where uh, some damage accrues to the plaintiff towards obtaining satisfaction for which he's permitted to institute a suit in the spiritual court. Such, for instance, are the subtracting and holding of tithes uh, from the person or vicar, the non-payment of ecclesiastical dues to the clergy as pensions, mortuaries, compositions, and the like. And that's Holt House New Law Dictionary, 1850 edition, but it's citing Book 3 in Blackstone's Commentaries on the Laws of England, which goes back to the... 1750s. The words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary. See, pecuniary cause is the, is the Roman cult. The words penal and penalty, as in Texas penal code, in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary. Imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. They're assaulting you with one of their so-called contracts. The word forfeit and penalty are substantially synonymous. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute and brought for the sole object of recovering a penalty or forfeiture imposed as punishment for a specific offense while remedial action is one brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, as in a 
Texas Penal Code, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute, where an action is founded entirely upon a statute, the only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture, such action is a penal action. A penal action is a civil suit brought for the recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. Such actions are civil actions, on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, on the other actions for private injuries in which the party agreed made by statute recover punitive damages. That's why the bar grievances is so brilliant, because these scumbag bar members are getting royalties off of this stuff, and you start filing bar grievances, and the Supreme Court is regulating, is supposed to regulate the bar. They know the law, they know what's going on, and when you start bringing up this stuff, you know, these bar members know exactly what's going on too, and they're scared to death of the bar. See, what happens is you stop them from, okay, I go to jail, they make $100,000. If I stay out of jail, they don't make nothing. There's no incentive for them to keep me out. But what we're doing is we're bringing uh, actions against them to stop that $100,000 going to the bar. They, they're, so they're working for nothing. They ain't doing it anymore. There's a guy that I know, and I don't know him. It's, I got an auto recording from him here in Texas. And he's got three documents that he files in the court. And he's got to the point now that the prosecutors just call him up and they said, look, you have any problems? Just let us know. We'll make it go away for you. And, and what he does is he says, he goes into court and he says, well, he says, he says, we got a, we got a, uh, what does he call it? A conundrum here. <laughs> we got a conundrum. He says, because, because the definition of money is a political, a political, uh, 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 a po political uh, uh, a decision, and and you can't that you can't define, and and he says because the Constitution says that I'm supposed to that money is supposed to be gold or silver coin, and you're demanding something, and you can't tell me to pay gold or silver coin because there's no gold or silver coin in general circulation and hasn't been since 1965, and you can't tell me to pay Federal Reserve notes because that'd be perjury of your oath, and I know you don't want to perjure your oath. And so we got a conundrum here. <laughs> and I think you should just dismiss this case. Okay. <laughs> see, now do you see how my 1020 works? Yeah, exactly. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. That's another of his ideas, the form 1020, which is his own homemade form. Yeah, it's a form. What I do is I take it <coughs> and I send it to the property tax people. We got a conundrum. You're saying to pay something. I want to know what it is. I'm really willing, ready, willing, and able to pay it. You tell me what it is so I can send it immediately. They can't say Federal Reserve. They'll notes, never tell you. And they can't say gold and silver. So I default to them and I filed in the court as paid in Why gold. can't they say gold and silver? Because then they because then they bankrupted America. Then what they've done is they brought the Constitution back in and we don't have it. Now let me ask you a question. Okay, yeah. do not be effect, effect, offended by this, okay? Well, let me use something else. Well, there hasn't been any lawful money in general circulation since 1965. Correct. When well, they yeah. took the silver coin, 90% right. silver coins, yeah. there's been no lawful money in general circulation. Right. So no. the clatter coins. No, think about this a minute, okay? They're yeah. copper. Is copper your, and nickel. Is, is, your, is your wife a prostitute? <laughs> no, no, I'm, don't be offended. I'm just asking, is she? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, she, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. She wears the same tools. So I can only assume she is. So here, me, how much, what is it going to take? Well, that ain't it. That's what we have today. In other words, it looks like money, but it ain't. Your That's wife, right. Right. Your That's wife right. wears the prostitution clothes or tools, but she ain't. See, what I'm saying to you is it's matrix. It's, it's the illusion. No it's it's an illusion. Way of looking. I know that. And, and we just have to understand if we can see it. And I, I've seen it now. But I have a form, a model or a skeleton to be used in a court of law. Yep. Once I send it to them and they default, yep. they admit to the following. I can sue them in a court of law now, or any court. I'm trying my best to do it. We got a conundrum. <laughs> You're saying you want something and I agree to it. Now watch this. And because of today, Glenn and I are asking for 500. That's all we want is 500. What would you say? 500, yeah, give us yeah. 500. Okay, here's 500. <laughs> <laughs> see, see the problem? You're going to say 500 what? Well, I want 500 ounces of cocaine. No, you're, well, you can't have it. You got it. See? See? I just gave you I'm more than 500. Grains of sand? Buttons? <laughs> see, 
<laughs> see, see, and that's what this does to them. It gives them into prison and it well, can them. And, 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 and under the Clearfield Doctrine, it says governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation. That's another reason why they can't tell you Federal Reserve notes. Yep. Take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen or a private cor corporate commercial paper and securities is concerned. For purposes of suit, such corporations and individuals are, are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. That's Clearfield Trust Company versus United States, 1943. Statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish in order the use and exercise of the law martial. So martial law supersedes and replaces common law. That's the reason that judge will get in there and he'll say, I can do anything I want in this courtroom. We saw the misery to which this despotism, which is a military dictatorship, would reduce us. That's taken from the causes and necessities for taking up arms 1775. This is all based on you give an inch and they take a mile. Right. They, they've taken the Constitution and the law and with professional and manipulative wordsmithing, they've morphed it into something else and made us believe it. And the right. more we go along with it, the worse it gets. Right. That's yeah, why they want our guns so for bad. I understand. Right. Okay, let me ask you a yeah. question. And it's going to get worse. And what's going to what's going to stop? So, so is there they a solution? Our guns yes, there is. We well, first of all, you got to educate yourself about what the problem is. Kerry has some good solutions. I mean, filing bar grievances is my, as is, is I think. No, but, the, the, but I mean, is there a solution that we, as a nation, Yes, we, the yes. people but, need to wake up and see what's going but, on and put a stop to it. Okay, for an example, let's just say the United States, with the, with the sheer military power that we have, we have the most powerful military on the planet. If New Jersey stands up and defies America, and America uh, takes its military, and when pounces on New Jersey, how long would it take to New Jersey Falls? It wouldn't take long. No, yeah. sir. 20, no, yeah. sir. 20, <laughs> no, sir. 22 years. Vietnam is the same size as New Jersey. See? Now we got to... Yeah, they, but they're not on. Oh! Wait a minute. See? So now you, okay, you're right. If there's an excuse. No problem. See? You're making excuses. The problem is what they're using is we're going to make money on the Vietnam War. How much money? How long is it going to go? They made trillions of right, dollars right. on the military complex. Right. Why? To throw our young men. Uh, it's uh, a satanic blood That's sacrifice. exactly right. So think about this a minute. Our military, with the sheer power of it, pounced on New Jersey 22 years later, put their tail between the legs and came home. That make, makes no sense to me. Here, say, say, say that again. I'm sorry. Okay. Vietnam is yeah. basically the size of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We now, took the, now the population is probably more. It is maybe now, but but we jumped on, on on New Jersey, Vietnam, for 22 years with everything we had. No, we didn't. We didn't. Well, okay. Ah, so, uh, okay, but ah. okay, but they had relationships with China and other. Okay. Well, our government has relationships with with no, Russia. No, I understand. Okay, that, see, but, but see, I'm just saying they let you go. Know, it's just Vietnam. Let go of your prejudice. Our government is not your friend. The cops are not your friend. You don't want to see it. I can't help that. Our guns a bad thing or a well, good thing. The the people have been asleep at the wheel. Yes. Yeah. The no, people the people are starting to wake up. Yes. And we need to take back our government. That's the way it works. Is you, they don't just roll over for you. We have to take it back. Like you say, but okay. It's Nancy, not going to stop. Look at Congress right now. Look at what they're getting away with. They no, should, I understand that. They should that. put yeah. all of Congress in front of a firing squad. Okay. Nancy Pelosi, when she retires, gets eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Come on, rest of her life. And 100% of uh, uh, insurance. I'm trying to think of you. Um, Douglas Wade said, told me to come. So come on in. Have a seat. Come on in. Have a seat. We're happy to have you. See, see. In other words, um, I make Social Security $1,100 a month. They want me to pay 40% tax on it. She makes $805,000 a year off my back. I have, I have the worst insurance on the planet. Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, but yet she has perfect. And yet, what did she do? What she worked for? She had three sessions of Congress. Hey, Darren. Yeah, you made it, Darren. Okay, so 
So if people are waking up, and, and that's the purpose of these meetings, to educate people about what's going on. We need to know what the problem is, so then we know what we have to do once. But we need to take it back, okay? And the problem is, is Congress, remember we talked about it, Congress is operating as a de facto corporation right now. And, and so we need to uh, convene a lawful de jure Congress. I believe Trump was working on that, and I think he's still working on that. And um, so, so is that outlined in your book, or it's well, uh, <coughs> the book was this Mike Blackwell. It's that's the other book is his book. Mike Blackwell asked me to write the book, and it took me about two weeks to write the book, and um, and then he had to babysit <coughs> me through the whole process of getting it ready to publish. And that took about six months. He asked me last a year ago, last January, last July is when it was finally published. Obviously, anything after that, anything after that, it's not in the book. And so, uh, but I talk about the deep state, who they are, where they came from, and how they got there, and all of that <coughs> stuff. Okay, and and the problems that we're facing. And so, and I use court citations, law dictionary definitions, international treaties. There's very little in there that's my so, opinion. So, okay, so is it kind of related to this or not? Yeah, well, this stuff, a lot of this stuff will be in there. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. see, see, what I told you was, what I do is I take the language that they bastardize. I take the bastardization out of it, and I make them tell me what they're saying. But but, but, but really, the, the solution is, is get rid of the, the whole language and everything. Well, okay, but that's not going to happen. See, Al Capone <laughs> was not going to stop selling Il bootleg liquor. You have a bunch of pirates that have taken over the government. That's right. No, I understand that, but so <laughs> it's we need to take the government back. When we take the government back, then then things will change. But right now, we need to educate people and and get them to the point that we can. And it's happening in some places. There's some uh, interesting things happening in Arizona and places. <clears throat> and so uh, where they've actually they fired all the county commissioners and they went and uh, re-elected new ones right there and in, in, in right on this video that I watched and then they said we're throwing the masks out you know and so um, that's that's the people taking back control you see what I'm saying but that's, they're it's limited control well it's in one county okay, okay but, and so but, but but it doesn't okay Texas has 256 counties how are you going to take back 256 counties tomorrow you're not so you take one at a time. If that's that's right. Case. And so oh, once, oh, once you get once you get a half a dozen counties that are that are running where the people live without fear and without being people need to wake up. Yeah. When we get back control of like the uh, the state okay. government, the state legislatures. Yeah. I mean, but, okay. So so even if you're somewhat sovereign, okay, like a a community, you still have people in that community that. That do well, crimes and, yeah, and all this, of course, correct. and and, and of course. you have to hold them accountable. Have to deal with it. That's right. At common law, common law is very severe. You know, there's no that's jails at common law. You know, it's either either you can stretch his neck, or there's no crime. In other words, <laughs> you see what wow. I'm saying? Really? Yeah. At common is, law, is, is that is that right? It's 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 really that's that's, kind that's of right. At, there's a there's a Robert E. Heinlein, one of these sci-fi writers, I think it's Heinlein, wrote a book about Stranger in a Strange Land, and it was a, another bunch of short stories. And there was one of them where this guy was a time traveler, and he went into this this place where it had pure common law. And so there was a car accident, and somebody got a broken leg. And so then the guy that caused the car accident, they broke his leg. And so then everybody can go their own way. Okay, that's pure common law. Now. Um, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. Matter of fact, that's why we have insurance. And so, but that's what happened, is maybe somebody way back when was gonna get their leg broken and they had a lot of money and they said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Instead of breaking my leg, will you take 5,000 bucks as compensation? And the guy says, yeah, sure, no problem. So now we got insurance, you see what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, that's how insurance came to be. Um, and so, um, there's, but that's a pure common law system, and it's common law is very severe. It's literally an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If you punch somebody's eye out, then they punch your eye out. And they don't care where you live. They don't want to know your address. They don't want to know anything about you. They just punch your eye out, and everybody can go their separate way. Do you see what I'm saying? So, 
I know, well, you know, I don't want that. So what? So but then we got what we got. Well, that's right. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's what we got now. Thing. It's a yeah. slow, painful process of doing anything about it. See? But if you don't do anything, you end up with what we got. Well, I got you a guy. It's not getting worse by the day. Yeah, we got a guy. Yeah. We got a guy on death yeah. row. Been that's for what fifty years is doing. That makes no sense. Right. See? Right. So right. The, he well, has people all their life in prison. That's that's fair, just. Uh, you know, I think that. You know, really, really, there's there's good reason to think that we just we reincarnate. So maybe you should give the guy an opportunity to come back and start another life. You know, and and if he's if he's in prison all his life, is that right? You know, I don't know. Um, now, when, when I may ask a question, what's right? Tell me what's right. I'll tell you what's right. What I say is right. That's what we got right now. You know what's right? What the law says is right. That's right. But I don't agree with it. But don't care, buddy. But remember, remember, common law is the unwritten law, and under the cause and the necessities for taking up arms, martial law supersedes and replaces common law. Under martial law is no law. And that's why they have to make all these codes for common law crimes like murder, assault. They have to make a code for it now. And so now you have literally millions of codes and if you don't know all the little codes and stuff, and then they'll violate your rights just because you didn't know about some code. And that happens today, every day of the week. Yep. See, I found, a, I found a document and they took my house. When they took my house, the guy said, <laughs> you misspelled the word. <laughs> we didn't know what you were talking about. So they brought the sheriff, the, the constable, 26 police officers surrounded my house came in my house with, with M16s, that's an AR-15, that's fully automatic. Yeah. They were all dressed in gear with the black faces. I said, what's going on? You spelled the word wrong. So so you lost your house? Absolutely. Be, be yes. The house was paid for, for God's sakes. So where was this house? Hearst. And they just took it, huh? Yeah. What? They're a bunch of thieves and pirates. Yeah. yeah. But why did That's they what do you that? Have. Why did they take? Okay. Why did they take yours? Because. What? Well, do you still have a mortgage on yours? Oh, it is. Somewhere. I don't have a mortgage. Okay. I'm what they did to me is because I, I sting them hard and I sting them hard every day. So what they did is in Texas you can go down for three hundred and fifty dollars and file. I'll just say I want to for a quick claim deed. You got a quick claim deed. The attorney took it to the county and filed it. He now owns my house. He sold my house to a third party for $350,000. He paid it. He went to the sheriff and says, I own the house. He won't get out. Now you think about this a minute. JP courts have jurisdiction from zero to $10,000. My house was worth $350,000. They took me to JP under a landlord tenant. What does that mean? My house is worth 360. dollars we don't care. He owns a house. You get out. But show me. We don't have to have that. Again, they're nothing but a bunch of See? pirates. That's what you have. And it's either common law or it's going to evolve to this and worse. Yep. It's, it's just literally a bunch of thieves and pirates. Anyways, See? we need to keep going. Yes, we do. Sorry. This is uh, Libra Code Article 12, uh, which Libra Code was written by Francis Lieber for Lincoln. It's a law of warfare for the U.S. Army. The law of war can no more wholly dispense with retaliation than can the law of nations of which it's a branch, okay? So warfare is international law. And, and the important thing to understand is that what's international law and what isn't. The law of nations is international law. Banks are international law. That banks, negotiable instruments, these Federal Reserve notes, that's why Kerry's Form 1020 is so brilliant because the courts have ruled that the best you can do with the Federal Reserve note is discharge debt with limited liability. You cannot pay anything with the Federal Reserve note. The best you can do is discharge it with limited liability, and yet they send you a letter to pay. And so that's why that says, what do you want me to pay? And, and they cannot answer that question. And so um, military dictatorship is international law. Uniform commercial code is international law. All codes, rules, and regulations all fall under international law. Unidroid, that's the Uniform Commercial Code. Unidroid is 
located about 100 yards from the Holy See in Rome. And it covers negotiable instruments. This is taken from the website. Negotiable instruments, civil procedure, as in Texas Code of Civil Procedure. Civil liability, secured transactions, maintenance obligations, secured transactions, as in mortgages. Contracts, banking law, transportation, leasing, franchising, hotels, insurance, anything to, related to marriage, divorce, children, municipal law. So, Glenn, basically everything is covered in your drawing. Well, well it's municipal, no. Municipal, state, you can, federal. You can, you can do contracts without it having an under uniform unit right, we can do it, but the current government is... Oh, anything to do with the government is, is unit yeah. Unidroit controls and governs the Uniform Commercial Code. The Uniform Commercial Code is private international law. Canada and the United States are signatories to the Unidroit Statute. As of this date, 63 countries have signed on to the Unidroit Statute. When, and the way it works is that if they make a change, then it automatically flows down to all those countries. So, so Texas, in Texas, is called the Texas Business and Commerce Code. And Texas has no control over the Texas Business and Commerce Code. It's controlled by Unidroit over in Rome. It's international law. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law, convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence and rule of action, whichever particular name, nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, page 12. So remember I was talking about it earlier, some of you didn't hear it. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law, as in civil law as in the rules of civil procedure. Okay? It's, it's all the same stuff. It's municipal law. So everything that's going on, I don't care whether you're in what kind of crime or so-called crime, it's still civil. There's no real criminal. Okay, and we covered that earlier. Some of you weren't here. And there's a maxim of Roman law that says, let he who will be deceived be deceived. They lie, cheat, steal as much as they can. That's why that judge, he's not going to tell you the truth. He's going to lie to you. And so I just, you know, I kind of get up in their face. I've got a nasty grab I'm getting ready to send to a judge. Um, um, but so... Um, it, it basically starts off and says, normally I say I accept your oath of office, but you and I both know you have no intention of honoring your oath of office. So, and then that's when I start using four little words. I won't use them here today. I say, screw your oath, you MFSOB. You know? <laughs> and it kind of goes from there. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, I sent one to a federal judge, <clears throat> and uh, I sent it last September. And last January, I got a letter at my I have a private mailbox. So they sent me an email, said you got something from the U.S. District Court, and I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. And I was in Arizona at the time, and uh, and so I was thinking, well, so then I checked tracking on it, and tracking said it came from Vermont or something like that. Anyway, so I wasn't sure what the heck it was all about, and I was wondering if, if my nasty gram had uh, gotten some attention. Anyways, I got back, and um, and they'd sent it back to me with a cover letter. And, uh, and the clerk had signed, they always send you an unsigned letter. And, 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 and it's like about 30 pages, and every paragraph ends with you MFSOB. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so um, they sent the clerk, sent it back, and said, You've got so many cases that are open here, we didn't know which case to file it into. <laughs> So they said, if you want to file it, write the case number across the top. If you want to file it into more than one case, then make copies and write the case number across the top, and we'll file it into the case. So that's what I did. But uh, so anyways, the point is, is they, they lie, they cheat. They're nothing but a bunch of pirates, OK? We need to understand what the problem is <coughs> before we can correct the problem. And so we, the people, need to understand what's happening. I've got a YouTube channel. Some of you people didn't, aren't aware of this. Um, I've got a YouTube channel called Sovereign Living. Uh, it's got um, about it 30,000. Sorry? Well, what, what is it called? Sovereign Living. All one word. Sovereign Living. Yeah, all one word. Anyways, um, I've got about 400 videos. I've got a website. Um, probably the best thing to do is go to my website, sovereigntyinternational.fyi. 
and you can go there and there's a page that has all my links to my YouTube videos and, and you can you can go to the videos and and then based on topics because YouTube, you know, they'll come up with with um, um, what they're thinking that you want to watch, but it certainly won't be, you know, everything that I have and they're not organized, you know, anyways. So probably my website is probably the best best place to go if you want to, you know, look at some videos, study them by topics, you know, kind of thing. Um, the important thing is, is that, you know, a lot of the videos are fairly long, and um, so you have to. But it's all, it's all got citations and stuff like this. There's, there's. Um, it's basically the same thing. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this. This will be uploaded to YouTube. YouTube actually took my channel down, and it was down for 15 minutes. I was up in the middle of the night, and they sent me an email. And they said they took my channel down. They, I've never had any strikes or anything. And I make all my own videos like this. And um, they took my channel down. And they sent me a link. And they said, if you have anything to say about it, send us a reply to this. And I said, I'm going to sue your butt off. I, I've been to the Supreme Court five times. You're next. Uh, all your executive officers and board of directors are personally liable in their private capacity and don't think I don't know what to do. And I sent that to him. 15 minutes later, it was back up. It's amazing how that works. Anyways, um, so federal rules of civil procedure, remember? That's Roman law, okay, municipal law. And they lie. It's all meant to be deceptive. It's meant to be deceptive. They lie. Texas Rules of Civil Procedure is Roman law. All mortgages fall under Roman law. Negotiable instrument law, that's your Federal Reserve notes, is a subset of Roman law. Bar members write all mortgage contracts. Bar members have decided every detail involving Roman law in America. Bar members told you the nature, have they told you the nature of the mortgages or negotiable instruments? Absolutely not. This requires Roman law. There we go. There's a kangaroo court right there. The judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The police works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And since no corpus delicti, mens rea, or ax reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. And that's exactly correct. Um, matter of fact, that's why I go after this guy right here and this guy. I'll file judicial complaints against him and bar grievances against him. And, and actually, I'm starting to file bar grievances against the judge. Because when you understand what's happening, there's no Article Three courts. He's not a judge. Okay, he's just another bar member that's acting as judge. So, okay, so these bar grievances that uh -huh. you file, yeah, who who reads this and acts on them? Well, they they dismiss them, but what happens is when they dismiss them, yeah. they uh, they send the, the bar member a copy, okay, and the bar member they're scared to death of the bar. I can tell you that, and. If they get more yeah, than yeah, but if they dismiss them, then why if are they, they get scared? more, let me finish. Oh, okay, sorry. If they get more than three bar grievances, they lose their bond. Yes, but they could be just who knows? It's, you know, but it comes down to insurance. Okay, they have an insurance carrier, and their insurance company doesn't want the liability of having lawyers that are getting lots of grievances. They're yeah, a bad risk. risk. It's a risk. They're a bad risk. Oh. But they're. But the grievances may have no merit. It didn't matter. How do you know? You just gotta have three. No, but I'm just saying, why do they have like three? It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So, so I can go to all to all judges and get these grievances, and then they get fifty of them. You might be able to. I don't know. Now, I mean, that's if there's a guy by the name of Randy Kelton who has Rule of Law Radio. Oh yeah, he's been here. And, he's, and, and he says that he's actually, Carrie was the first one that gave me the idea. And then Randy Kelton basically, you know, confirmed it. And, and, and I can tell you that I've got, I've got stuff going on 
and I file bar grievances, and those scumbag bar members go silent. I just all of a sudden don't hear a peep out of them. Now, hey, have you ever worked for a union? Have you ever worked for a union? No. Okay, a bar is a union. That's right. So what happens is when you file a grievance against a union member, they've got to stop it. From they just got to stop it. So I used to work for the AFL CIO, which is the uh, okay. I worked for them. Okay, when I can be at work and be sound asleep, and 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 if one of the coworkers files a grievance on me, they take me, file it on the company for letting me sleep. I'm the guy that was sleeping, but the company has to pay the price. That's what this is. So you file the grievance on the judge and the county or the city that he works for. They're going to pay for it because he's now a risk. So I was under the impression I've been hearing about maritime laws. Is that the same oh, thing? Yeah, yes. Roman yeah. law. Same the same thing. Law, Roman law, huh? Same thing. Right. Okay. And 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 so so what happens is um, is is um, Randy Kelton is, is is pretty sharp. You, you saw him here. And, and so he was another one that, uh, matter of fact, I want to work with him on, you know, uh, going after some of these judges and stuff like that. Um, I like to, I like to... Uh, Can we start with Whitley? Uh, Whitley? Judge Whitley, yeah. Sarah County Commissioner's oh, really? Court. Can we do something oh, there? Oh, oh, him. Well, oh, file a bar grievance against him and, and a judicial complaint. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I sent him one of my nasty grants. Really? I did. I sent one to him. And all the county commissioners too. Yay. Well, let's do it. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. See, that, that's what I did, and uh -huh. they finally answered me. And, but not, what they did the was, the they said that the judge has a lot of latitude, and if even if they even if they uh, make a mistake, there's something you can do. You don't now, have wait, wait, now I got what I wanted. No. So in other words, see now I. That's can, why. Oh, that's that's why I that. think that you can a bar grievance is more effective, and the reason a bar grievance is so effective is because the bar is regulated by the Supreme Court. There you okay? go. And the Supreme Court knows the law. And, and the chief judge is the guy that's responsible to make sure that the bar is properly regulated. And so, um, matter of fact, if I could get enough people to come for a grand jury for the Republic of Texas, I'd like to bring an indictment against the bar. Um, and so, uh, but, you know, nobody wants to participate. I've tried to get people to participate. Again, we need to convene our common law juries and grand juries. I mean, the, the power is in our hands. We need to start exercising it. Uh, anyways, so. Uh, and if we do, who's going to acknowledge it? Well, sorry? Who will acknowledge it as being lawful? I don't need their permission, okay? I don't need their permission. Matter of fact, they'll say we don't recognize you, okay? Well, uh -huh. actually, when we bring an action against them, we bring it in our court, there's actually a case in Dallas, okay, that it happened, okay? It was the Republic of Texas won Supreme Court. I've got the case, I could show it to you. And, and, they, uh, they convicted WFAA TV and they fined them. And uh, WFAA TV didn't even show up for their trial. Uh -uh. And, and <laughs> so then, they it was after they got convicted, they sent the convictions to Dun & Bradstreet on Wall Street, okay? And WFAA TV couldn't get insurance, they couldn't get loans, <laughs> they couldn't get anything. Because the bar members on Wall Street at Standard & Poor's and uh, and Dun and Bride Street, they know the law, and so they couldn't get anything. And so WFAA TV brought it into the 65th District Court, and that's what I have. Is I have that 65th District Court case, wow. and and they asked the judge to vacate that judgment, and the judge says I can't do that. He said it's res judicata. It's already been decided. And and WFAA TV. This was in the mid 90s. WFAA TV had to file bankruptcy. Now, I don't know, but those people that got that judgment should have filed a claim in the bankruptcy court, and they probably would have got something out of it. Maybe wow. some ownership of WFAA TV. Right. You know, I don't know. But again, just because they say we don't recognize you, good. I know you don't recognize me, but you damn well better quake in your boots because I'm not fucking done. Anyways, don't get me going. So you, when you refer to the Supreme Court, when you refer to the Supreme Court, you're referring to the Texas Supreme Court. This was again the Constitution. Okay, the under Article Six, Section Two, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution only sets up a Supreme Court. 
and it says that Congress can set up all inferior courts, right? Well, in 1861, the Southern states walked out of Congress, and Congress ceased to have a quorum. Lincoln ordered them back under executive authority. They've been operating under executive authority ever since, and so they're not legitimate, okay? They're a bunch of thieves and pirates. And so the de jure government is sitting there dormant, waiting for us to operate it. Let me finish. So what happened is that um, in Texas, some of us figured that out, and that Texas never really joined the Union. And the Republic of Texas is still here. And so we brought the Republic of Texas out of abeyance, which means dormancy. And we formed the provisional government of the Republic of Texas. That's exactly what the U.S. does. When they went in and invaded Iraq, they formed a provisional government of the Republic of, the Re of Iraq. And then after a period of time, they held elections, and now you've got the real government that's there. Well, we did the same thing here in Texas. And I'm a senator. Right, a senator, right now. I'm a senator in the Republic of Texas. And, and I was Speaker of the House of Representatives. I've also been in charge of the affairs. Um, so the Republic of Texas is here. And the first thing these pirates say is, we don't recognize you. Well, I don't need your recognition, okay? And if you look at federal statutes, it says in there that I don't need their recognition. And so, um, but we can convene our common law juries and our grand juries and bring indictments and put on trials, and if they don't show up, we convict them, just like they did back in the, and it's our one Supreme Court, okay? Under the Constitution, it's the Supreme Court, so this is our Supreme Court. And, and, and we put them on trial, and we convict them, and then we send them to Democrat Street. And, and the lawyers there know, know the law, and they can't get insurance, they can't get bonds, they're forced to do something, another thing we can do, is we can bring it into their de facto courts as a foreign judgment. They have to recognize it there. And so there's a lot of ways that we can deal with it. What judgment? What judgment? A foreign, foreign judgment. Foreign. That's right, because the Republic of Texas is foreign. The, what I'm going through now is the fact that all these courts are District of Columbia courts, okay? So these, this, this is a territory, okay? But you can be in the territory called the state of Texas, or you can be in the Republic of Texas. That's the Republic. Which one do you want to be in? Mm -hmm. Right now, all these brain dead idiots out here are in the territory, and they get these, these military judges right there, that's military commissioners under martial law, and it's been going on for decades. So which one do you want to have? It's up to you. You have to choose. Choose wisely. Isn't that what they said? Choose wisely? The, uh, in the uh, bloodline of the Holy Grail or something like that? Choose wisely? <laughs> Anyways, so these are all, this is military dictatorship. That's exactly what it is. They're nothing but a bunch of pirates and thieves. It's the District of Columbia. I get cases turned over all the time, and I just put a one-page letter. I get a citation. I'll put a one-page letter on it, take it down to the court, file it into the court, and it disappears. And I'll say, um, you, Constitution of the United States of America, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. I'm not a United States citizen. I am a Texas national. And, and then I say, vacate the citation for lack of jurisdiction. And then it goes away. Once you understand what's going on. You say that you're not a U.S. citizen. That's right. Absolutely not. U.S. citizen doesn't have any rights. I can show you court cases that say the only absolute right of a United States citizen is to live within the territory of boundaries of the United States. That's it. That's the only absolute right. Everything else, they can do whatever they want. That ties in with the social security number and when you're born? Yeah. That's all part of it. It's a suspect trust. It's a corporation. It's an entity. They don't have rights. No corporation has okay, so if So if you say you're not a citizen, they can cut off... It's all separate. They all manage that separately. I don't get Social Security. I don't want Social Security. No, I understand. But people do. I understand that people do, and they pay it into it all their lives, and I don't have a problem with that. It's all dealt with separately. It's a contract. It's not Social Security. That's right. If you read to what it says, I have not paid Social Security since 1988. It says in the contract, if you pay five quarters, you're eligible. I reached my five in 1977. <laughs> well, there's 
there's there's a Supreme Court case called uh, Carlisle versus United States from 1875, and it said that everyone is sovereign that's not privileged. Okay, everyone not privileged is sovereign, and so when you and it, and it, it's it's all in what you admit as evidence in any case. So so you don't tell them if if you have a case going on. You don't tell them anything about the Social Security. You just tell them about their unconstitutional Roman hoax of K trust. You see what I'm saying? And and, and and it's all of what you give them. Remember, back in the in the in the sixties uh, and seventies when I was a kid, there was all these television programs with uh, you know Barnaby and, and uh, uh, Perry Mason and all that. And the, the stuff that they kept saying is and that's inadmissible as evidence because we didn't admit it. If you don't admit the evidence, then it's an admissible. So don't admit it. If they go and force you to admit it, then you didn't admit it. The judge sits there, wears a military uniform. The judge sits there and plays stupid. If you fail, follow some obscure rule or procedure, they sell you into slavery. Everything they do is a fraud and a nullity. Yes? When you said... You know, there's people that say that they're copyright or uh, getting a certified birth certificate and all that stuff. I would never do that. Um, the reason is, is the birth certificate's a fraud. Okay. Um, and so, uh, again, if you did it, if you did it, just don't admit it as evidence. So, so it's not fatal if you do it. Okay. There's times when you maybe could admit it, and like there's a guy that I know uh, of in, in, in Canada that he'll take a copy of the birth certificate into traffic court and he'll say to the prosecutor, this is not for identification, this is for evidence of my interest. And I hereby release my interest to you to settle this matter. And the prosecutor will say, oh, thank you. And the thing just goes away. They're just looking for money, okay? And they take it out of that SSK trust account. And I've got a letter, and I might have it in this presentation, I'm not sure, but I've got a letter from the New South Wales Attorney General, okay, that's Australia. I've got a letter from the New South Wales Attorney General's office that says the birth certificate is to discharge government debts. That's what it's for. So if you're subject to that, my argument is, is that the Constitution says I'm not subject to that. So go away and leave me alone. And, uh, and, and I dump on it. You see what I'm saying? And so if I was, that's another way you can deal with it. So did I answer your question? Well, I just want to know, do you just say I'm a Texan or is there somewhere they're looking it up? Oh, no, no. Just the fact that saying. you say it. Just you have to say it, say the words. Now, Texian National. I did get, um, they wanted me to have a public, um, public pretender. Oh, well. and So I go, but I don't want one. Oh, we're going to give you one. Okay. So I'm going to fire them. Barter you. No, just barter you. That'll, so, that'll get it working for you. Then they send me a bill. And she goes, well, you should be thankful because what all the charge do you have? So it's $189. So I called the DA up in Iowa and he goes, I said, can you take that off my trust? He said, the judge can. Well, I found a motion for subrogation so take it off my trust and it's gone. Yeah, so so uh, you can do that. Um, another thing is, is if, if, if they're giving you a, a bar member, I, I draw bar grievances against them. And, and I found that to be so powerful. Uh, they, they dismiss them. They throw them in the garbage. I don't know what they do with them. But they send the bar member a copy of the grievance. And and, uh, and the Supreme Court regulates the bar, and that bar member knows the law. And, and so I always bring up uh, that he's representing me without authority, that that is an ethics violation. Um, I, I bring up, you have to bring up at least a few ethics violations or they'll, they'll blow it off right away. And so um, I'll, one of the things I'll say is they're representing me without authority. I didn't hire him and he's making legal determinations for me. And, and representing me without authority, and perjuring his oath of office, and then I'll have a list of, you know, probably about 10 felonies that they're engaged in. And um, um, anyways, um, so 
And, and I'm following Barker. So, so when Randy Kelton was here. I don't know if you were here when Randy Kelton was here. That guy's pretty sharp. And, and he talked about, um, at least, I don't know if he told you the story when, when he was here, but he told, there was a story where he told me that they barked the public pretender, and this public pretender was in court begging to get off the case. He says, I cannot work this way with a sword of Damocles hanging over my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened, when I went to Tarrant County, I filed a, uh, a lawsuit, and the judge says, you have to have a bond. And I said, okay, how much? He said, 200000 I said, okay. So I wrote a bond for 200000 And I signed the bond, and, and I gave it to him. And we went on with the trial. When it was done, I said, can I have my bond back? He said, no, it's already been spent. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. What do you mean spent? They cashed it. Right. How? Did you have 200000 no, I wrote a bond. They took it from my trust account. account. Yeah, my, from my trust account. From your, oh. I wrote, I wrote my own bond. Oh my God. And the, the, the form that I used was my 1020 form. I said, this is this is a 1020 form bond for two hundred thousand. I signed it, and any any and all monies must be returned to me after the case starts. After it was started, I asked the judge for it back. He says, it's already spent. Sorry. Yeah, so but we went on with the, the we, judge probably took it off. Probably, but we went on with the trial, even though I was supposed to put up a bond, and all I did is wrote my own and signed it. <coughs> right? Do you think someone can do that, Harry or Glenn? I don't care. No, no, here's my question in this scenario. I've got a friend who's got three big dead guys, but she only oh, has one. Okay, long story, but she only has one. So she's got an ankle bracelet. Didn't agree to that. Well, she probably did somewhere. The blower to start the car, camera, spent eighteen hundred a month. They're making her go to AA closet, but she's not an alcoholic. Jump through all these hoops. She's trying to figure out how to get those. Okay, let me let me explain to you. She needs to start filing bar grievances for starters. But let me explain to you what I found out. She got a DWI somewhere. Now, what you can't do is you cannot borrow. Uh, regulation from one statute and apply it to another statute. So right. we have what we have is we have a um, um, an alcohol beverage code. What does the alcohol beverage code cover? What does it cover? Tell me what you think it covers. Alcohol <laughs> beverage Self. code. What do you think it covers? Alcohol sales. Act no, sir. Alcohol beverages. How did you get drunk? Alcohol beverage. In the alcohol beverage code, where does it say you can't be drunk and drive? Where does it say that? It doesn't. It comes out of the state law. So they borrowed the state law and applied it to the alcohol beverage. So what we're doing is we're attacking that with the alcohol beverage code and saying, I'm confused. How does it come out of the alcohol beverage code? Now, what they're doing is they're, they'll take you to court under Title 27 and say, well, for fair to file. That's Title 27. So we question, I'm confused. How does Title 27 have to do with 26? The judge throws it up. And he doesn't want that out there. So what we're doing is we're challenging the alcohol, the, the, the drunk driving under the alcohol beverage code. We have an alcohol beverage code, so it has to be in there. It's not. So what they're doing is they're borrowing state law. To write the belt, the alcohol, drip driving drunk, and it's not in the transportation code either. So what they're doing is we're using the transportation code, the alcohol beverage code, and we're filing it in the case. And what we're doing is they're going, well, uh, uh, that doesn't matter. Then let's go see a judge. And then what we do is we, when we get there, they either don't show up or they 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 let it go because what we're doing is we're, I'm just trying to show them what they're doing. <coughs> See, my big thing is, as you know, is the definition of the words. So I take the definition of all the words that they use and I make them define, define them. And so, so by making them define the words that they're using, it comes it, it comes off. See what I'm saying? It, it automatically just... Well, they, they, and then you might know about this. They, they never made her blow or take a blood test. The judge just said, if the cops are drunk, you're drunk. Well, I know we, we had a guy that was, it was cold and snowy, 
And so he stopped his car, drank a couple of beers in the car, started his car, leaned it back, and went to sleep. The cop caught, knocked on the door, and they, they tried for a DWI because the keys were in the ignition. Right. So what we did was we went in there, we said, well, um, um, so the question was, I said to the prosecutor, are you a prostitute? She says, absolutely not. Then why you got the tools here in court today? I object. She's wearing the tools of a prostitute. How much is it going to take? And she, see, see, I don't think normal. And the judge says, come up here. What are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do anything. But she's got them on. And I'd like to see it. How much is it going to cost me? So they dismiss the case because they, they can't think the way I think. They can't get their arms around me. So the question is, if you look at the indictment, they'll tell you what the indictment was for. There has to be an affidavit of probable cause. 99% of the time, the probable cause would be in, the, in an IRS case is 7203, will for fair to file. You didn't file a 1040. So the question is, if I'm getting tried for will for fair to file, Title 27, then the 1040 has to be a Title 27. Uh, it has to be. And that's how we're getting off of that. Okay. Um, I've got a lot of territory I have to cover, and there's someone else that wants to speak. And so I appreciate the questions, uh, but i gotta, I got to get moving on this so we can cover it all. Um, anyways, when acting to enforce a statute and the subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge in municipal court is acting as an administrative officer. That's why they're all District of Columbia courts. This presentation is about District of Columbia courts. Does anybody know when a judge is not acting under a statute? I've never seen them not act under a statute. It's always under a statute. They're always bought and paid for clerks, not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering and enforcing statutes. That's why I'm starting to file bar agreements against the judges, too, because they all have to be lawyers to get to be a judge, trading their statutes. Um, courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely as an extension, as an agent for the, uh, for the involved agency. They're bought and paid for clerks. There is no such thing as an Article III court unless we, the people, convene our Article III courts. It's the accepted rule, not only state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for court. Judges have become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. They cannot do anything judicial, like issue orders or warrants. None of that stuff. Where there's no jurisdiction, there's no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Such has been the law from the days of Marshall Say. That's a federal court case citing Bradley versus Fisher, Supreme Court, and that's citing Ken Koch. Okay, that's Koch and his commentaries on the laws of England in the 1500s. So this is as old as time itself. That's not a court. You got to understand, it's not a court. He's not a judge. He's a bar member. Bar grief, the SOB. <laughs> We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district, as in U.S. citizens, and those of the states are not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. There is no such thing as an Article 3 court. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power nationally covers those citizens, even one of the several states, as though the ex district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. That's why you bar grieve the, the bar members and why you bring up Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Because the District of Columbia is 10 square miles over there between Virginia and Maryland. It's not here. International law rule. 
adopted for areas under federal legislative jurisdiction. Federalizes state civil law, including common law. The rule serves to federalize not only statutory, but the common law of state. So they're assaulting you with their international law rule. Requires a military dictatorship. Congress, claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions, imposed martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an expansion of military and municipal jurisdiction. Well, where's the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, all sorts of stuff. It's all over the place. It's a military dictatorship. Once you understand that, and I send, like this nasty grab I'm getting ready to send to this judge, a copy is going to the Provost Marshal General in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Get him. <laughs> Get him. Get him. The 14th Amendment is an extension of the national military uh, powers presently used in a municipal character. Remember we talked about municipal law, Roman law, Roman civil law? Municipal character enforced by municipal laws stretch far beyond the original limitations that are enforced by Article One tribunals. That, that is taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A. H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court related to the case Diet versus Turner. That document is available on my website, and I would recommend that anybody, everybody should get that. It's full of all sorts of little nuggets of knowledge, and that guy, um, it's easy to read. It's double-spaced. It's like 150 pages, so it's nice, quick, easy to read, um, and it's got all sorts of jewels in there. And um, anyways, a place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army. Whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not, martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation and conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. That's Article One of the Libra Code. Well, guess what happened in 1863? Right? The Union Army invaded Texas. So Texas is under martial law, and that's been ever since. And, and Article 2 says, martial law does not cease during the occup uh, its hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the Commander-in-Chief two ways. Special proclamation ordered by the Commander-in-Chief uh, or by special mention in a treaty of peace. Now, the southern states, all there was was a armistice, okay? It's a ceasefire. That's all that ever happened. And with the Arizona, Arizona was picked up with the Treaty of Hidalgo. Well, the Treaty of Hidalgo doesn't say anything about any martial law. And then there's other ways that you can wind up with martial law too, like with the bankruptcy, the law of emergency rule. I thought when uh, I thought when the Southern, I thought they had a, a unconditional surrender. Uh, between, uh, Lee and, um, they just, there's a ceasefire. Armistice. There was they never always a peace signed. treaty. Uh, there was never a peace treaty. There was still a war. No, they can't. Peace treaty is between two sovereignties. The Southern Confederacy was well, an unconditional surrender. Whatever. Southern. That's still, it's still, it was an armistice. It's all it was. Our history is all skewed. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there was no, there was, all it was was a ceasefire. Right? Yeah. We agreed to stop shooting. There's three kinds of martial law. This is taken from Ex parte Milligan, U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, this is a Civil War era case. Um, and this is again found in that non-ratification of the 14th Amendment. Three kinds of martial law. There's full martial law. Uh, it's a declaration of martial law is issued. Troops are on the streets. It's used only during wartime, used on a foreign country, or when actually invaded by a foreign power, or to put down an armed rebellion. Martial law proper is the law of the armed forces. When a captain tells a private what to do and it's enforced by a court martial, martial law rules the law of necessity and emergency. Allows the domestic use of martial law powers. It's used during peacetime and it can continue for centuries during a military occupation. That's what we're under right now is martial law rule. That's why the police wear military uniforms. Martial law affects cheaply the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes. Whether imposed, why do you think the IRS behaves like they do? They want that tax return or you're going to jail. Okay? They want, they'll take your bank account. It's all arbitrary. They don't get warrants. They just do whatever they want to do. It's all martial law. And the pigs. Okay? 
I get going about the pigs. The police. Anyways, um, there's some of them that are good, honorable people. Don't get me wrong. I just don't see the run into them. Um, You've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, whether imposed by the expelled government or by the repair, refers mainly to the support and efficiency of the Army, its safety, and the safety of its operations. Well, gee, why do they want you to wear a mask? For your safety? They want China. That's what they want. That's right. Vaccine? There's a New World slave flag. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like Amen. My book. I wrote a book about Trump. <laughs> about um, the deep state, actually. It's not about Trump. It's some of it's about Trump. It's about the deep state that he's dealing with, who they are, where they came from, how they got there. I, um, Mike Blackwell actually asked me to write the book. He published it. Um, it took me about two weeks to put the book together because I've collected this stuff over the years. Hey, and you a question? Yeah. Why do you think Trump pushed the vaccine? vaccine? I think that he wanted to, for, for one thing, we would have been under martial law with the masks and, and the tyranny right. for years. Because right. it takes like 10 years to get those things certified and all that. And so, and he's always said, if you remember, He's always said that everybody that wants the vaccine will be able to get the vaccine. <laughs> He's never made it mandatory for anybody. And, and uh, well, that's... But well, why didn't you tell him it's not a vaccine? Well, no joke, eh? Yeah. Well, I think he's, again, uh, he has to let them hang himself, okay? Remember, he is... Exactly. I, I he is... That. I think he's trying to restore the Republic. But now... I think he's trying to restore the Republic. Um, my book was I, I wrote the book a year ago last January and and then Mike Blackwell babysat me through the whole process of getting ready to publish. So it was published last July. And so, you know, everything after that, there's none of that in there. But um, like I was saying earlier, Trump did an executive order in uh, 2018 about foreign interference in our elections. And I think that um, this is my opinion. I got no proof. But um, I think the book is full of, it's very little in that book is my opinion, okay? I use court citations, law dictionary definitions, international treaties, all sorts of stuff to support what I say. There's very little in my opinion. But my opinion is that, well, first of all, we all know that D.C. is bankrupt, okay? And it's owned and operated by the Roman cult. And, and so uh, I think that, that these Dominion voting machines that they, because of Trump's executive order, they found that the transmission from these Dominion voting machines was going through an Italian satellite, this was last December, and, and that was leased to the Vatican. So that's why the National Guard troops are still in D.C. to this day. But they're leaving. Well, but the D.C., I think they've moved. I've heard that there's new capital being prepared in Missouri. Missouri, yeah. In Missouri, yeah. Anyways, somewhere near Kansas City. Anyways, um, so again, this is rumors. Um, I think that um, um, that he is the republic. He's the president. The military knows it, and they're letting them hang themselves. And um, there's going to be some people that die. And you know, it's it's again, you know, the people are going to be so cliff high is a computer nerdy scrapes the internet for, for uh, um, and he's been <laughs> saying this stuff was going to happen for years. And and he said that, that for about the next 20 years, the American people are going to be so pissed at the New World Order crowd, and and and, uh, and they're going to be, there's going to be executions. There could have been already, I don't know. Uh, they're going to hold war crimes trials. Anyways, you know, um, I think that, uh, that Trump is the president, that Biden is called the Biden show, kind of like the Truman show. And, and, uh, and I think that, remember when he tripped three times going up? I think, that was, I think that was a movie set. Right. I think, I think that, that the stairs were screwed up on the movie set. That's why he tripped. It was purposeful. That's a joke. And, and so, so um, anyways, um, so it's all Panama. the brain dead idiots. Panama. Yeah. That's right. I believe it. And so, anyways, there's, I don't know how many of you have heard of Jerome Corsi. Anybody heard of Jerome Corsi? 
Okay, so yes. we have yeah. Jerome Corsi, uh, he's got a PhD in political science, he's got a bunch of books he's written, he's got a website, he's got a YouTube channel. Right. Anyways, there's a YouTube yeah. video with Jerome Corsi, he knows Roger Stone. Yeah. Anyways, there's a YouTube video with Jerome Corsi where he says that in 2015, five generals came to see him and they said that there was a group of generals in the Pentagon that were going to overthrow Obama. And of course he said, well, you know, you can do that, but maybe you want to go talk to Donald Trump first. Mm -hmm. And three months later he gets a phone call. They decided not to overthrow Obama because Donald Trump had agreed to run for president. Now, you know there's a war college in the Pentagon, right? Most people don't know that, but there is. They study warfare, and that's what they should be doing. And the biggest, most important part of warfare is why did an inferior force overcome a superior force? See what I'm saying? And it's called psychological warfare. And I think the entire Trump administration has been a giant, giant military psyop. And it was like when he's on Twitter, he throws out a tweet, he's like he's fishing. <laughs> and they take the bait and he reels them in. And, and, and I think it's just been all one giant military psyop. The psyop continues. And, and I think that they're letting them hang themselves. They're out there um, building a case. They got a. They want to get the people that are behind the whole thing. You yes. see what I'm saying? And exactly. these people are very powerful and very rich. And so maybe we'll get to see some Rockefeller necks get stretched or some uh, some Rothschild necks get stretched. Maybe it's already happened. I don't know. Um, you know, I wish I could say I, this again. You know, stuff I don't have any evidence of. They're not going to tell you because... That would tip the people off, wouldn't it? But you just said, I'm, I just read your book, it says a true American patriot or not. Right. Yeah. Well, I let you come to your own conclusions. I put the evidence in there, you come Fair to your enough. own conclusion. Yeah. Hopefully, some, is that? hopefully some liberals will read the book and get How much is your book. I sell it for 30 bucks, and if you get it from me, you can get it on Amazon. Yeah. But if you get it from me, it'll be autographed. I'll autograph it for you. So um, I got them for 30 bucks, that's what the list price is. Anyways, this is the book. It's, uh, it's about 400 pages, 450 pages. In the back, this the back I didn't write. The publisher wrote this, but I think they nailed it. It says, uh, read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the founding fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of the satanic Roman cult on our politicians and our political system. Does Donald Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? And Trump, you will see the great battle of the And so you go, you go over because I'm thinking about getting this for my aunt. See, my aunt is brainwashed, and, and I can't get through to her this military psyop and all that. I don't even go that far, but she she watches Fox 24 hours seven, so. It, does this go into because she doesn't even believe about what happened in uh, 1861? I believe it was. She didn't. Do you go over that and do you have some footnotes and all to kind of confirm the? Oh yeah. In that? Well, it's pretty well documented that the Southern states walked out of Congress in 1861. Well, but she doesn't. Not from her perspective. She was a teacher. She's been in school. They don't teach that in school. They don't. Yeah, I'm not. Well. Um, they don't teach a lot of this history. That there's we're finding out there's even, that. I've even got, um, like there was a South Carolina uh, legislature action that said the 14th Amendment's unconstitutional. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, lots of evidence of that stuff. Um, I don't know if, if what you're looking for is in there. Um, King George financed both sides of the War of Independence. Okay, stuff like that, yeah. Well, that's found in the Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783. There's two treaties. There's a treaty, the Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783, where King George says he was king of England, Ireland, and France. And then there's another treaty where we agreed to pay back 18 million libras to France to fight that's the Civil War, or the War of Independence. Well, that means King George financed both sides, right? And they've been financing. And they've been playing that game. Right, that. Yeah. right. And, and, you know, so, I mean, it just goes on and on. Okay, I already read that. You can order the book from Amazon or from my website. I prefer you order the book from my website. If you get it here, you won't have to pay shipping. Amazon does not provide autographed books. 
If you want the book autographed, or the book on my website, and don't forget to tell me what you want the autograph to say. Do you want to know the origins of the deep state? Who's behind it? And again, I only use stuff that I can prove. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to believe there's half a dozen different United States, okay? And, um, um, but there's only two that I can prove. And the Supreme Court talks about it. There's a case, Dunn versus Bidwell, that case that we talked about earlier. Some of you weren't here. It says in there, the dissenting opinion says there's two national governments. One operates within the Constitution, the other one does not. Again, um, you want to know what an administration is, why it's called the Trump administration. It's in the book. You want to know uh, how Trump came to be president. We already talked about that a couple of minutes ago. You want to know who owns Congress. It's in the book. Uh, you want to know why they're called law enforcement officers, because they're enforcing the martial law. <clears throat> Do you want to know how you became a slave? Do you want to know what the root cause of the War of Independence was? The same thing. It's happening right now. Do you want to know why every president goes to visit the Pope on their first international visit? That's because he's the owner. That's because it's a Trump administration, and an administrator is an ecclesiastical office. So the Pope has to appoint him. But the Pope isn't too happy about it, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty funny because he's yeah. yucking it up with all the previous uh, Yeah, the there you go. Up. Right there. I'm looking at my chair. It's like death warmed up. <laughs> 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 yeah. Did you, you, see the, did you see the footage where he kind of he gets up, tries to get it to hold his hand and he knocks it away? Is that right? Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. He's just completely playing. It looks like he's out of Jimmy In reality, they're not after me, they're after you. I'm just in the way. There you go. Martial law is a law of public necessity. Necessity calls it force. Necessity justifies its exercise. And necessity measures the extent and degree to which it may be employed. That necessity is no formal artificial legalistic concept, but an actual factual one. It is necessity of taking action to safeguard the state against insurrection, riot, disorder, or public calamity. What constitutes necessity is a question of fact in each case. Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It's the argument of tyrants. It's the creed of slaves. Copies of these documents can be found on my website, linked under my recent YouTube videos. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, share as a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms. Contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. So in your book, you have, all, you, you have obviously, you have an uh, index and all these are... are uh, you know, uh, well, something like that? Yeah, yeah. So you have references and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Several pages. I just, you know, she doesn't believe anything that she doesn't see on Fox, so. I mean, seriously, or the Epoch Times. It's either the Epoch Times or Fox. Well, Epoch, Epoch Times is a good one. I like Epoch, Epoch Times. Times. Well, I know, but they really... You, I, I kinda They're really like superficial. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like it, but you know, the, the, the former Chinese dissident, the guy that's the publisher, the owner, or whatever, <laughs> you think he'd be all over this color revolution crap that happened in this coup. Right. And that's not on there. And also about this damn vaccine a, a holocaust. They're just not going for it up. And that's yeah. why I, I, I scoff right. at all that. Yeah. They lose a little credibility. Now. Donations. Yeah, they do. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the military script, the fake money, the IOUs, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, checks, money orders. Send me an email for particulars. You know, I've had people with an email address of taxman at gmail.com send me an email saying they like my, uh, uh, my price list. So I sent it to them. Well, they never make an order. I just don't understand why. Uh, you know, again, I think they're going to the case. But again, remember, there's that Carlisle versus United States that we talked about. It says everyone not privileged, okay? Using Federal Reserve notes is a privilege. You're discharging debt with limited liability. That's a privilege. If you're saying, making it very vociferous, that you prefer a gold or silver coin, but you can accept the fake money, and you call it fake money, then it's not a privilege anymore. Is there an alternative to, uh, have you thought about, a, I guess, uh, Amazon's the way to go? Amazon is such a horribly evil yeah, company, I know. Yeah. But I guess well, that's, yeah. you know, that's what you got to do. And that's part of the being evil. That right? would, that that would. A monopoly on their assets. That would, well, again, it, that's with anybody or anything, you build a case against them. 
I mean, that's just normal procedure as far as I'm concerned. And so uh, if Amazon is doing something that you don't particularly like, you build a case against them, and then you file a bar grievance. You use that to file a bar grievance against their chief counsel because their chief counsel is giving them permission. And enough people start filing bar grievances, I guarantee you that bar member is going to, you know, it rolls downhill. You know what I mean? As used in this act, the term United States means government of the United States. The term currency of the United States means currency which is legal tender in the United States and includes the United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. That's um, Gold Reserve Act of 1934, located at 48 Stat 337. In <coughs> other words, Federal Reserve notes are meant only for internal use of the government. And so nobody should have them except government employees. Forced loans is probably the single most important thing in a military dictatorship. It makes it so the courts presume you do not pay a debt. It makes everybody into paupers. And paupers have no rights except what they allow you to have. I don't care how many Federal Reserve notes you've got in your wallet. You could have millions. You're having commercial paper from a bankrupt corporation. That's what you've got in your wallet. Or essentially subjects, right? Your property. That's right. Paupers. That's the reason I carry this. It says one dollar on it, and it's one ounce of silver. Gold is the money of kings, silver is the money of gentlemen, barter is the money of peasants, and debt is the money of slaves. At common law, only gold or silver are legal tender. And that's quoting Book 2 on the Institutes and the Laws of England, which is Coke in the 1500s. If you want common law, it requires honest measures. Single most important requirement for a Republican form of government is lawful money. Lawful money is not Federal Reserve notes, it's not bank notes, it's not forced loans, it's not discharge debt, and it's not international law. Federal Reserve notes are commercial paper. Federal Reserve notes are a forced loan. There's court cases that talk about it. Federal Reserve notes are IOUs. All commercial paper falls into two categories, promissory notes and IOUs. A requirement of a promissory note is it has to have a promise to pay. Gold certificates and silver certificates were promissory notes. They're still commercial paper, and they're still a negotiable instrument. You can never pay a debt with Federal Reserve notes. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 7, Do It Yourself, Hung Out the Volunteer for the Selected Service in the Draft, Martial Law is here, Do It Yourself, No Income Tax, Do It Yourself, Free Mail, do it yourself, kangaroo courts, Canada border pigs playlist, bar members and their satanic connections playlist. There is a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. These bar member scum lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. Really, I mean, what the heck is that? Discharge falls under international law. Cryptocurrency is not a forced loan. Anything can be used as a medium of exchange as long as we agree to it. It's called barter. Gold or silver coin is exchanging one thing of value for something else of value. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. And my private group on Facebook is being deleted. You know, I haven't been to Facebook in months, and I'm not interested in going. Why don't you get on Telegram? Why don't you start? I am on Telegram. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Sovereignty yeah. International. <coughs> yeah. um, my uh, free list private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servant. Follow me on Steemit. I've got a library channel and Patreon and MeWe. It requires citizenship to be the opposite. This is there's three things that had to happen. Martial law, citizenship to be the opposite. There was something else that we went through earlier. Congress converted citizenship into the opposite of what the founders intended for the purpose of enslaving everybody. This is U.S. Supreme Court, Colgate versus Harvey. And while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. So under the Constitution, the, uh, think about it, okay? 
in the Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783, it says King George recognized the United States, and then it goes B-A-Z, in other words, and then it listed the states. New York, Delaware, Pennsylvania, listed them all as free, sovereign, independent states. Before the War of Independence, we were state citizens, and that's it, okay? Or state nationals, okay? I like the word national way better. Uh, anyways, so before the Constitution, we were all state citizens. So we, the people of the states, delegated certain authority for our posterity. If you read the preamble, it says we, the people, that's the people of the states that they're talking about. So we're Texas citizens. We're not U.S. citizens. A U.S. citizen is a slave. And they converted it into the opposite with the 14th Amendment. And I've seen people of all races, I don't care what race they are, of all races claim this because who knows who was sleeping with who in the 1700s? The 14th Amendment reversed and uh, annulled the original policy of the Constitution. The 14th Amendment creates or at least recognizes for the first time the citizenship of the United States as distinct from that of the states. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished uh, from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. Citizenship is a political status and may be defined and privilege limited by Congress. Lots of court cases that talk about this. Every taxpayer is assessed to pay trust. Fictitious entities don't have any rights. Um, having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's a summary from Henry Bolins. Sad will be the day when the American people forget their traditions and their history and no longer remember the country they love. <clears throat> the institutions they cherish and the freedom they hope to preserve were born from the throes of an armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. So this is taken... Who, who was that? I have a question. What? When you say fiction, you're talking about people, right? Like corporate fiction. Corporate fictions don't have rights. That's right. So we're corporate fiction? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So do you think that they're going to use that as far as against us, as far as uh, say the new strains coming out, say the people are, being, are creating the new strains? The only the thing, new, all of then, this, what are they going to make? They're going to make the unbacks with the bad guy. All of that is horrible right. law, and, and it's for fictitious, for government employees, I'm really who it's for. i got to keep moving. Um, this is actually taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. We got a lot of territory to cover. I don't know what time is it there. Uh, it is 13 after, so we wrap things up. Um, I'm trying. Um, anyways, this is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, Volume Two, under the definition of Mort Main. It says, "Yet still, it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity." That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they are driven out of all their former holes, they devised the new method of conveyance by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but the nominal fiapes to the use of the religious houses. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the use and receiving the actual profits, while the season of the land remained in the nominal fiap, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy. That's the Roman cult, folks. So, so the Roman cult gets to be the, all of these Baal priests with the black robes, that's all Roman cult. Okay? That's what they are. Is they're bell priests. They're Satanists. That's all member. Civil law. Um, to be bound in conscience to account to assess the case use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trust the foundation of modern conveyancing. It's all tied to the Roman cult. And I don't know if anybody here is Catholic. Hmm. Some of my best friends are Catholic. It's not anything negative to say about people that happen to be Catholic. Okay? There's lots of wonderful people that are Catholic. Um, when I talk about the Roman cult, it's the Vatican. It's just like the Jews, the Zionists. Right. This is where it's codified. 15 U.S.C. Section 44, Definitions, Corporation shall be deemed to include a company trust, so-called Massachusetts Trust Association Incorporated or Unincorporated, which is organized to carry on business for its own profit or that of its members, and 
has shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest. And then it goes through the same definition, but it does not have shares of capital or capital stock or certificates of interest. That's the SESTK trust. Birth certificate creates a SESTK trust. Many people are getting birth certificates authenticated by the Secretary of State, thereby claiming to capture the account with the Treasury. Doing this puts you into international law. You've got to understand that. I don't do that. I think it's a mistake. Um, again, you have to decide what you're going to do, but I wouldn't do it. This is taken from Article 22. This is the Hague Conference on Private International Law, 2nd of October, 1973, um, and the Convention Concerning the International Administration of the Estates of Deceased Persons. Article 22. Any person who pays or delivers property to the holder of the certificate drawn up and where necessary recognized in accordance with this convention shall be discharged and let us prove that the person acted in bad faith. And this is Article 23 of that same convention. Any person who has acquired assets of the estate from the holder of the certificate drawn up and where necessary recognized in accordance with this convention shall, unless it is proved that he acted in bad faith, be deemed to have acquired them from a person having power to dispose of them. So again, again, this is talking about birth certificates. Birth certificates are fraud. That's my attitude. It's a fraud and a nullity. If you participate in a fraud, you can't claim fraud. Okay, that's what has to happen. If you sit there and get that thing authenticated, then you're participating in the fraud. Fake money in the SESTK Trust uh, in, is in international law. And this is actually the, uh, so I did have it in this one. This is the New South Wales Registry of Births, Deaths and Marriages. This is from the uh, Attorney General for the Australian State of New South Wales. And uh, we're gonna blow this up. I wanted to show the certification stamp seal on the bottom. We're going to blow it up and get it closer here. That's kind of fuzzy. It says a birth certificate is used to establish identity and enable individuals to establish their rights and discharge their obligations in respect of services provided by the government and private sectors. So, you know, if you want to use it, you got to understand when to use it and when to not admit the evidence. That's important. All evidence, if you don't introduce the evidence, then it's not admissible. You got to understand that. Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting territory or other property belonging to the United States. Well, think about it. If you are subject to rules and regulations, do you think the state of Texas is subject to a code of federal regulations? It sure as heck is. City of Bedford is subject to a code of federal regulations. It certainly is then that means it's property of the United States. That's exactly what it is. Under Article 4, Section 2. And the same thing is in Canada. Any country, they're all the same. This is the principle of law. Canadian Ownership and Control Determination Act. Owned means subject to the regulations. If you're subject to the regulations, that's what a slave is. Think about it. A slave is owned. <clears throat> Every corporation, for all its purposes, is an agency of the bitch. No disrespect intended for dogs. <laughs> resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Therefore, non-resistance to tyrants is obedience to Satan. Well said. So uh, I'm going to try and start breezing through this. I think we already... There's no common law offenses against the United States. There's no, under Texas law, no act or omission. That's what happens. They impose martial law, and martial law is no law, and so then they have to pass statutes for common law crimes like murder, assault, kidnapping. Uh, they have to pass statutes for it. Common law is the unwritten law. Common law says I can do anything I want as long as I don't damage somebody. Anyways, try and keep moving here. Under military dictatorship, there's no law. This creates uh, civil law, which is what all these codes are, civil law, right? And civil law is deceptive, right? Civil law is municipal law. Military dictatorship, you have a democracy, and the democracy is international law. I've got Patreon stuff. I'm going to breeze through that. 
A republic is the only form of government which is not eternally at open or secret warfare with the rights of mankind. All subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extend are objects of taxation. But those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. It's obvious. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. Do you, are you here because you got permission? I certainly didn't. That's why I dump on them. That's U.S. Supreme Court, 1819, McCullough versus Maryland. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation, one's by sword and other's by debt. This is Article 6, Clause 2, the Supremacy Clause. The Constitution is not a document for the government to restrain the people, it's an instrument for the people to restrain the government. A nation of sheep will beget a government of wolves. It's the duty of the patriot to protect his government, his country from its government. It's all about territorialism. For U.S. citizens, every state is a territory. They're still limited by Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, and Article 6, Clause 2. And this is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. To exercise exclusive legislative jurisdiction in all cases whatsoever over such district, not exceeding 10 miles square. The founding fathers were brilliant. They understood the threats, and they, they did everything they could. And then it says, if you go on, uh, as may by session of particular states, uh, no, uh, become the seat of government, and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state. Well, so, do you know that there's no federal enclave in Texas? And that's what they're saying right there, is it has to be a federal enclave. Like authority purchased by the consent of the legislature, which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dark yards, and other needful buildings. There's no federal enclave in Texas. Because it takes an act of the legislature, and there's no acts of the legislature creating those federal enclaves. But the reason is, because most of the people are asleep at the wheel, they think they're U.S. citizens, and U.S. citizens are automatically in the District of Columbia. Officers of the court are, have no immunity when violating a constitutional right for their deem to know the law, this is the preamble, we the people of the United States, that means we the citizens of the state. In order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. So what I do is I have, my mother did a bunch of ancestry. And so I can show my ancestors being here prior to the War of Independence, so then I have a right of blood which is very, very powerful. And many of you can probably do the same thing. I bet you probably all could. Articles of Confederation is a compact between the states. That means between we the people. Constitution is a compact between the states. We the people are the free, sovereign, independent states. It's not we the U.S. citizens. It's we the state citizens. This is Article 1 of the Dependent Treaty of Peace of 1783. His Britannic Majesty acknowledges the said United States, VIC, and he lists them. So those are the United States. It's not the United States, although he's got the United States capitalized, which means makes me believe that there is an actual entity called United States. Uh, anyways, he lists them all. To be free, sovereign, independent states, and he treats them as such for himself, his heirs, and successors. The enumeration of the Constitution and certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people in the Ninth Amendment. People don't mention the Ninth Amendment. That's probably the single most powerful thing you can use because it's common law rights. It brings in your common law rights. And there's unlimited common law rights. No state shall coin money, mint bills of credit, made anything but gold or silver coin, and a tender of any payment of debt. A Republican form of government, Article 4, Section 4. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independent of that instrument. The style of this Confederacy shall be the United States of America, Article 1, Articles of Confederation. And there's a passport right there, United States of America, two separate entities. 
Passport is a written document given to a person or persons by a commander of belligerent forces authorizing him or them to travel unmolested within the district occupied by his troops. Passports are issued by the State Department or other similar office in other countries to diplomatic agents and others entering or traveling in foreign countries, which are the same general character as those issued during war. The latter should, when practical, have a photograph of the bearer attached. This is taken from the Rules of Land Warfare, 1914 edition, Passports, Safe Conduct, Safeguards, and Cartels, Chapter 7, Section 4, Article 276, page 100. There's a federal, re there's a silver certificate. It's not Federal Reserve note, it's a silver certificate. And it has the United States of America on it. There is a land pact. It has the United States of America. It's established fact the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89 719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. The United States federal government exists today in name only. That's one of the ways that they impose martial law. Same day, March 9, 1933, same day. Since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. It continues to this day. That's why they always have to declare a war. Okay? Always have to have some war. Even Trump did that stuff. Have to have some war. It was fortunately the war with Trump was against the deep state. Right. And, and so he was doing it against the right people. With Obama, it's against people like us. Yeah, you always have some excuse, COVID-19, vaccinations. Uh, yeah. isn't, isn't, isn't that where executive power comes from? Exactly. From the state of war? Exactly. Um, within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kinks and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Nothing can stand against the church. That's Roman Catholic Archbishop James E. Quigley. Chicago Daily Tribune, May 5th, 1903. Oh, look at that. There's Congress. And look at those two Roman fasci next to the speaker's podium. There's another picture. That text is hard to read. That's the pimp. Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp. Uh, coming to visit. Uh, anyways, 24th of September, 2015. But let's see what the text says. So we'll start on the, on the left over here and then go around that way. So this left says uh, Roman Achaea military staff carried to battle by all Roman commands planted on all conquered nations. So that's this staff right there. We'll have a better picture of it here in a second. Devout Roman Catholic, honorary degree, Jesuit Scranton University. That's Biden. That's that, that Biden pimp that's currently the president. And then, so that's this text right here. And then now we'll go to this text. Roman bundle of rods bound to a weapon symbolizing subservient under the rule of a single man. That's pointing at these two Roman fasci. And then devout Roman Catholic trained by Jesuits installed the first Jesuit to the house. That's Beener or Boner or whatever his name was there. Greenway. <laughs> Sorry? Boehner. Boehner. Boehner was his name. There's a better... <laughs> Speaker of the house. There's a better like picture. Yeah. There's a better picture. There's the Roman military staff oh, wow. right here and the fasci right there. I that. So if that eagle on the top of the flag, that's not the Roman, is it, necessarily? Well, the eagle is a symbol of the Catholic Church. That's true. Yeah. Tupper Saucy talks about that in his book, Rulers of Evil. Yeah. Now, that's another good book if you want to get one. Pope claims you're not Christian if you own a gun. Yeah, of course. He doesn't want anybody being able to defend himself. But in considering the question before us, it must be borne in mind that there is no law of nations standing between the people of the United States and their government. That means the state citizens. The government, federal government, is supposed to be as a shield to protect we the people. People have united, uh, people of the United States have delegated to it to a certain enumerated powers and forbidden it to exercise others. Color, remember we are wondering about color of law. Color means an appearance of semblance or smokerum as distinguished from that which is real, a prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior. It's a fraud. It's a lie. 
Colorable, that which is in appearance only, but not in reality, or what it purports to be, hence counterfeit, feigned, having the appearance of truth. Color of law means the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal right. Misuse of power possessed by virtue of state law made possible only because wrongdoer is cloaked with authority of state as action taken under color of law. That's all this uh, uh, coronavirus hoax that's going on right now. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, so whether it's a hoax or not, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, that's all of this stuff is color of law. But in fact, in law, some statutes are intended to be applied to those who are residents of the state under the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. That's a summary from uh, United States versus United Mine Workers, 1947. At common law, our rights are unlimited. Remember the Ninth Amendment? We talked about it. Every citizen and freeman is endowed with certain rights and privileges to enjoy which no written laws or statute is required. We don't need their statutes. These are fundamental or natural rights recognized among all free people. As a general rule, men have the natural right to do anything which their inclinations may suggest, if it be not evil in itself and in no way impairs the rights of others. If we want to be one of we the people, you cannot go into international law once you go into international law in any manner. You cannot claim yourself a sovereign ever in that matter, okay? The courts separate the issues. Once you say, once you do anything, I see people do it all the time. And then they wonder why the judge ignores them. If you do, these so-called judges will see it and see you do not know what you're talking about. They may just railroad you and let you deal with it. They may say you're crazy. I've seen both of those things happen. Or they'll certainly ignore what you're saying. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You're the father of the devil, and lust of your father you will do. He is a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Bar members are liars, thieves, and murderers. Bar members know exactly what they're doing. This is Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma, page 322. Lucifer the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? And with its splendors, intolerable, blind, feeble, sensual, devilish, selfish souls, doubt it not. And uh, actually, according to Pike, Masons are worship Lucifer. Uh, Glenn, can you wrap it up now? I'm, I'm just about done. This is like the last two. Okay. This is what how I handled a citation right here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it went away. This is what I did. I did that right there. I put date. Constitution of the United States of America, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. I'm not a United States citizen. I am a Texas national. Vacate the citation for lack of jurisdiction. The only thing I should have done is made it under penalty of perjury. That's I forgot to do that, but the case still went away because they've already dealt with me in other cases, and I'm sure they don't want to deal with me again. But there's a citation right there. It's all under Article 1, the Federal Constitution, using bar members. The place where your rights are violated the most is in their so-called court under uh, the one-page response using Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. File it into their so-called court and keep a copy for evidence. File a judicial complaint and bar grievances. All of this is coming from the UN and our international law. It's all satanic. We need to prepare bug out locations. We need to use virtual private networks. We need to use private mailboxes. I use private internet access and the only information they have on me is an email address. So it shows right now that I'm surfing from Canada, it can show I'm surfing from anywhere on the planet, and um, and the only, I use Litecoin to pay it. So they have an email address and that's it. Has anybody watched the movie Enemy of the State uh, with Will Smith, where they're hunting this guy down, he doesn't even know why, and they're chasing him with satellites. I was in a room where I was talking to this guy that said he was in the room when they're arguing over who gets the satellite. And now they probably have all sorts of other satellites and we need to be looking at alternative remedies. Anyways, that's the end of it. I appreciate your uh, opportunity. Uh, I'm going to start unhooking my stuff, and you can come over. Right. And you very good. Yeah. Okay. Tracy Ford is going to talk to us next. And she has some remedies that we can do in writing letters to the school. So she wants to talk to us now.
lot of things we all can get together and do to help out the children. Come up here and get your computer set up.